test. Besides that, really. Sorry, I'm in the middle of like a Zoom meeting right now. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello, we are starting. I, hello, hello, everybody's coming in. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. We are starting in a moment. I'm trying to get everything going here. Hello, hello. Thank you for your patience. We're starting. We're starting. Thank you for all the homeworks, too. I got many, many, many coming. Oh my God. Okay. Hello, hello, oh my God, okay. We are start. thank you for your patience. We're starting in a second, we're starting in a second. I'm just trying to get, you should tell me if you, I'm assuming, ooh. Okay, we're almost good. Um, if, I'm assuming people can hear and see me. Maybe, and if someone could indicate. Yeah. We can see, right. and we're, you're also your whiteboard too. Thank you. Now that's my next question. But my whiteboard right now, it looks just like a white, literally white. Is that correct? Yeah, it's clear. There's nothing on it. There's nothing How on it. How do you okay. see the, the the whiteboard? Because I don't see the whiteboard. Okay, wait. Well, something's going. Yes, yeah, something is not entirely working with it yet. So bear with me. For, something is not. Oh no, oh, I see what the problem is. Okay, now you should see, oh, and someone has their hands up, which, which is great. I don't, but I don't know if, it's, if that's by accident or hold on one second. If, if William's hands up for a question, please do feel free to ask. No, it was just you. Ask if we could see the whiteboard and I just- Oh, right. right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and now, speaking of the whiteboard, now I'm hoping you do see some blue writing on the whiteboard. Do you guys, now you're seeing the whiteboard and it has stuff on it. Is that correct? Or, no, or did you just lose me, Audio? Gabriel? Yes. Oh, that's yes. All right. Thank you. This is so- um, all right, good. And I'm not saying, it, and you don't have to write that down, like that's sort of left over from yesterday, but that's just making sure we still have, okay. Okay, okay. So hello, hello, hello. Um, again, I, um, I'm i not lying. When, to me, every day is a pleasant surprise that any of this works at all and that you're all so here and so here and ready. Um, and so um, we're gonna get into, we're gonna start rolling more and more with the material now, hopefully just getting faster and faster each day in, in a good way. Um, and your homework load will probably also increase, as you can imagine. Um, uh, um, so we're going to get to it, to, to picking up from where we were yesterday. But there are logistical things and grade-wise things. Um, oh, number one, uh, 
someone very legitimately asked on the first day of class um, about exams. Like first, you, you didn't even have a syllabus then, so you might, one might have assumed that the exam schedule and stuff was in the syllabus. Well, you did get a syllabus, although we haven't discussed it very much, but you might have noticed that there is no indication anywhere in the syllabus about when the exams are. Um, uh, and uh, uh, It does say when the exams are on oh, the syllabus. It, do it does? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Well, how about that? Uh, does it by any chance say that the exam is a week from today? It says it's on the Monday, that the following Monday, so the seventh, the seventh class. Wow. Professor, can Amazing. you read the comments? Sorry, oh, I, wa I wasn't at the moment, but I will right now. Hold on, sorry. Okay, this is helpful, let me look. Uh, it says it's on the oh, seventh oh. class. Oh, oh, on the homework stuff, I'll definitely just, I'm sorry, wait, let me back up for a second. Um, all these comments are totally legit. I mean, and I'm just going, and my sequencing is, yes, all these comments are legit. Let me get to them in a minute. But the basic tone of all these questions about the homework is like, I'm with you. Uh, I, I'm interested in, I want to hear this. And yes, I'm going to adjust my stuff to your stuff. We are in a conversation, both in the class and how to run the class. Um, so I, I, yeah, let me address specifically these homework questions in the chat in a second. But certainly anybody who has not handed it in some homework yet and is worried about, nothing to worry about like the, if you have not handed in a homework yet the, the the it's then just you will hand it in we're not we're oh i know what it is i'm sorry yes the google classroom will start saying things like turned in late and blah blah or giving you notifications if you know we're now past some deadline that i put in it sometimes i'll change the deadlines just to mellow that out um but the, but that's google enforcing my authority with complete rigidity I will let you guys know once we're in a zone where I consider something late. Like, you know, by next week, I might say now, if you're handing in homework one, come on. Yeah, we're going to call that late, but we're nowhere near that. Anybody who hasn't finished anything yet, you can still totally get a full credit on it, I promise. And, and I'll get to the more details about that in a second. So, okay. But on the exam, same kind of thing. Um, I'm glad to hear that we did put an exam date in the syllabus. I'm surprised. But we often don't even do that because we really do, for good and for bad, try to actually live in the present with the students. Like, and, and, you know, we try not to be, make decisions in advance that don't respect what's going on in the moment. So I, I often adjust exams and stuff as we go. If, if the syllabus says next Monday, that's cool. I'm here to offer. I would have suggested next Wednesday. Um, I'll, I will never, ever change an exam date to make it earlier than you thought. And I'll never surprise you with an exam or anything like that. But so that people can start planning and stuff, uh, if it's OK, can I right now officially say, uh, unless you really desperately wanted well, it Monday. Could we uh, have I'd, it on Monday because it would give us more time over the weekend to study and prepare? Wait, because Monday, more? Tuesday, Wednesday, we have a lot of class and lab work. So we would have more time over the weekend to do work. Oh, 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 yeah, that's such a, yes. Okay, that is totally true. Then let me say this, that's totally fair. Only I think it would be too fast to have it this Monday. I mean, I'm not even sure what we would have. I mean, we'd have an exam on the material of just like- No, no, one. not this Monday, okay, the so 27th, next, where oh, it lists yes. it on the schedule, it lists it for the 27th. Oh, let, oh. I'm so, I've misunderstood you entirely. I thought you, I, oh, then that's fine. Then that's perfect. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying it was for the, and, and I'm sure you said it right. I'm just getting, if you're saying that the syllabus actually says the exam is uh, not this coming Monday, but a week from this Monday, if that's what you're saying, I totally think that's, that should be the case. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. No, then yes. Can we all, is everybody in on this? Like, can we get thumbs up or something that we're, I'm glad it's in print. I'd forgotten that. But yes, we are then uh, right now officially saying that there'll be an exam, not this coming Monday, but a week from which it can, yeah, could we get a show of just hands to say, or thumbs up to say, like, you hear that, I guess. Hold on, I still can't, I don't see anybody right now because I just see the chat. Uh, I'm assuming, I'm seeing hands, I'm seeing hands. Could I get any hand? Well, does anybody want to object to that? I mean, um, and that's a weird, would anybody, please put all your hands down, everybody put all your hands down or whatever, electronic signaling. And I want to take one last moment on this. It's a weird thing for the professor to ask on this, but does anybody have an active like thought about why that's a bad idea that they think we should hear now before we move on? Okay, if not, all right. All right. So we're gonna say the exam is a week from this Monday. Uh, um, one thing about exams with me, no matter like what the circumstances are, 
I always give a practice exam before, uh, meaning to a take home document that uh, always has solutions, maybe not at the moment it's distributed, but you always get an exam in advance that looks, that will meant, uh, look very similar to the actual exam that you'll take. And, um, and you use the practice exam for just that, to practice for it. Um, and you get solutions to it, maybe not simultaneously. Um, that, in my opinion, has to happen before an actual exam happens. Um, so you, that will happen here as well. Like uh, you'll probably, oh, um, so we'll talk more about that as it comes. But if your exam is that Monday, then that means, you know, by the Wednesday before, the, the class before at the latest, we'll have a document all to go over and discuss and, you know, therefore know what to expect. Okay. Um, all right. But thank you for- Do we go over that with you in class yeah, or do you just give us the answer? No, no, that's a really good question. I mean, so we, you always go, we always go over it in some fashion. Sometimes it ends up being in the lab period that that happens. Like sometimes Professor Wu will go, like depending on whatever time crises there are and stuff, sometimes Professor Wu will go over it with everybody instead of me, um, sort of acting like lab is recitation type of thing. Um, and or what may happen this summer because of time pressures, I might like go over it uh, I might make a recording of myself going over it and post that for you to watch. Um, but yes, like in one way or another, uh, ideally, we literally do have sort of a review period to go through that before the exam. The only problem with that is, of course, it takes away class time. So, so I apologize in advance. Sometimes that session involves me answering as many questions as I can about it and saying everything I think is significant. But some things I'll just leave to, okay, look at the solutions for this, you, you know, look at the solutions here's how i did but yes i mean the answer is yes uh um, um 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 that's why i was scared when i thought you were saying the exam was this monday because we would never have time to do all that for that um all right any other so we'll talk more about that as it comes but uh I, uh any other okay on the homework similarly we're, we're about to start going over the homework um um oh, oh oh how do we take the exam as what is the format all right oh and is it a take Okay, sorry, sorry, I'm just looking at all this. Oh, the 27th. Okay, the chat's all right. So the 27th is good with you guys. Okay, and yeah, oh, sorry, if someone's waiting in the waiting room, sorry, 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 thank you. Um, uh, the quick answer is yes. All this talk about exam that we're doing right now, and all this saying that it'll be next Monday, the funny thing is the other reason I'm a little bit uh, vague about the dates is it's gonna be take home, yes. We'll talk again about that. Um, everything I say about the exam until we, once you have a review packet in your hand, everything I say about it, I'm just going to say uh, in the same fashion that I would say about a regular exam. Like we take it that seriously and all that. But yes, um, there's um, an, almost assuredly it's going to end up being take home I, um, um, because I think, because um, for a variety of reasons. And we'll talk about what that means. Uh, and, and those people who've had me before know what that means. But We'll talk about that too, but yes, it will probably take on, which really means whatever date we're saying, you're gonna have more than that amount of time to do it anyway. You're, um, but we'll talk about that. Uh, 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 uh. On the homework, um, um, on the homework, okay, now I've already started falling behind. I mean, I know how pressed this is and how little time we all have it like, after you have, you know, all day of class. Um, so may, I hope so none of you have gotten back homework number two from me yet. None of you have has gotten back homework number two from me, which you gave me yesterday. I got it from tons of you, which I'm very grateful and psyched and we're about to go over it. Homework one, many of you, I hope, I believe have gotten back from me. Some of you have not. I'm going to hopefully finish those in, in the middle of this class. Actually, hopefully you'll get them by the end of this class. But many of you got back homework one from me, I believe. And I think you will find that if you just literally did submit a PDF with like all the questions addressed in some clear way, you probably got a 50, which is exactly what should be the case. Many of you will see a lot of backwards check marks on the homework from me. Backwards check as opposed to a regular check. Backwards check is my way of saying, I'm going so fast here looking, I'm looking so much just to see if we're on the same page that you're doing it, that I'm not committing myself to if I do a backwards check, it means I, I'm not guaranteeing that your actual answer is exactly right. 
It might well be, but I'm not even looking at that. I'm just saying you did exactly what you need to do and like you fulfilled your responsibilities and we're both good. Um, you know, for exact answers, sometimes you have to like pay attention when we go over in class or watch the recording. Uh, again, on this homework, as you might've seen yesterday, I kind of do know the answers and everything in my mind. So a lot of times I could just put a check just from memory, but if I put a backwards check, it does not mean you're wrong. It just means don't, don't, you know, don't commit me to having committed that that's an exactly right answer. I'm just saying it's full credit work. Um, so, you know, I'll get more picky about that, about, I'll be more picky about the answers as we go on. Um, so if you got a 45 or like a 49 or something like that on this homework, if you got a 45 or a 49 or something, I promise you it's a hundred percent just because you didn't give me one PDF. Um, if you got a 45, it means maybe you gave me like, uh, JPEGs or Word document and it, no, it seems like I'm being incredibly picky, but it's much easier for me to manage um, a whole class. Of, it's much easier for me to deal with PDFs all at once. It, in other words, if you do a different format, then I have to treat you differently from everybody else and it slows things down and also makes things kind of unfair. So if you got a 45, that literally just means I need a PDF. I'm very sorry, but I do. Can you just resubmit like you know, this week with a PDF and then just have it literally changed to a 50. Absolutely. It's just my way of saying, please, like, let's just get on the same page. If you've got a 49, honestly, that means it's because you submitted a Google doc. And honestly, it, I probably should accept those. I really, that they, I think I'm about to change my rule to expand those. It makes no sense for those not to, I mean, I think those work even better than PDFs. So I should accept it, but I haven't actually said that yet. So I just want to make sure again, that, we're sort of taking each other seriously at all times. So if you got a 49, just, you know, just, re you get my point. Um, what, there was one other actual thing. Wait a second. Oh, I, I noticed a ton of people, a ton of people. Uh, oh, if you got a 49 and you did send it as a PDF, I'll look at it again. It may be some other tech, just you, whoever you are, take it one more look and see if there's some other technical reason that I might've done that, that you can see, but if not, just um, I'll look at it again, or somehow note if I'll look at it again, and maybe I made a mistake. Um, I de again, everybody's going to end up with a 50 on this homework. They are if they're like, you know, unless you leave the class. Um, uh, 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 wait, but there was so content, you know, for the most part, everybody's content was great. And a lot of people showed a lot of stuff on the last question. And a lot of people didn't. And the last question is really the meat of the matter that we'll get to back to today, but there was one more, I'm sorry, one more important thing about the content of this homework I want. Oh yeah, that I noticed a lot of people, two important things, a lot of people did do, uh, did manage to submit sort of a version and then a revised version uh, in the same portal, which I'm very glad to see. I had become convinced you, somehow yesterday's discussion got me convinced that that would be really hard for people to do, but a lot of people did it. I totally appreciate it. And I hope they see that what I did was I just graded the most recent one. And, you know, but I definitely saw that there was another copy there that just sort of beefed my impression of. So, so if you, that's great that those people did that. And if they can pass the word around how that's terrific. Um, da, da, da. Now, content wise, I have to say, there's a lot of impressive work in that first homework. We'll get to homework two now, which I mean, in a moment, and it sounds like you said that that was a lot. And I appreciate your honesty. And I'll take that seriously. Homework one, though, uh, people, a lot of people showed a lot of willingness to either figure something out that they hadn't before or go on the web or something with some unfamiliar territory. Like people showed that. And a lot of people actually showed that that last bit of the homework that, again, is kind of the meat that we have to pursue deeply now. A lot of people showed that they had some recognition or intuition or a background in something resembling differential equations, or at least calculus. And, and of course, I know technically calculus is required of everybody, but I also know what that actually means in practice. Um, so I'm impressed is what I'm saying. I think this is a very diverse group. I still have, and I'm, I, when I say diverse, I mean, literally, I think there's a lot of people in the room, uh, not from John Jay, that's always true, but a lot of people from a lot of different places, a, like a lot more than usual. And it seems like a lot of people are bringing a lot of strengths to this room, um, uh, not to mention work habits that I'm glad about and mean I'm going to uh, take you seriously if you, you know you say the homework is too much or this or that. I'm also going to ask you to please, like for example right now, please feel free to stop me when I'm talking too long about something because you guys are obviously quick and I can move on quicker and you can let me know that. Um, 
so uh, on th that, homework two. Um, okay, well, I'll, for, let's start going over it. We'll see how, if it was a lot, I apologize. You can, we'll see how much we get to today. I can't say that you won't have, I, I can't say you'll have less homework than that tonight, but you know, tonight is Wednesday. I am gonna take advantage of the bulk of time. I will try to beef up your work over this weekend, honestly, to make less of a press between Monday and Wednesday, but uh, I don't, we'll see. I'm frankly, the way I saw all you do the homework last night, I'm thrilled that what you didn't, I was afraid you were gonna think the last night's homework was a joke actually, and that I was gonna bore you. So if it was too much, that means we got something to discuss and let's go. Um, Oh, 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 sorry, last thing, recordings. I am having major upload speed problems with, like I've, I've now tried to upload that recording of yesterday three different ways, two simultaneously, and, one, and it's, it's still dragging along trying, I apologize. You, you might end up seeing an MP4 file in your Google Classrooms that you would then have to download, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. You should just be able to hit a link. But I am trying to upload as fast as possible, and, um, and we'll probably go to, I will probably be purchasing a device of some fun hardware card to, uh, kind to help this, because uh, I want you to have those recordings. Um, okay, I think my item of business is to is to pick up where we were yesterday and use it to move toward homework too. But any, I'm not looking at the chat at the moment, I'm looking off into space. So are there any other, like what am I forgetting to deal with before we, before we hop back to the end of homework one, any other questions or, oh, someone's waiting in the waiting room. Okay. Any other? Uh, we're good. We're good. Okay. Oh, that's a someone. Someone. Hold on. What is, someone. Something. Definitely. Uh, sorry. Are we all? Oh, how, is that? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, good question. I know someone. Wait. Sorry. 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 Oh. 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 These are great questions. I'm sorry. I guess I have to. Be, it's so weird. This like stop and look at chat concept i mean i guess you guys are this is i didn't learn this in teacher school this stop and look at chat thing so but you guys use it so well so forgive me uh yeah like nah, can you please let you wait i don't remember the with wall this oh yeah 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 okay again if someone got a 49 but they sent it as a pdf please remind me that i'll check it again if you got a 50 oh if you got a 50 out of 50 do not <laughs> waste your time submitting with corrections honestly i mean uh and uh, and from and soon if you already if things are already picking up and the homework's already getting a little thick i'm going to advise at any moment you always you can always resubmit for a higher grade like say you get a 45 you can but quick if you it's not going to be worth your time any of you to resubmit things um once we're really rolling if you're in the mid 40s or higher 40s it we, i wouldn't even advise that it's worth it to you to worry just move on because you're doing great uh so don't definitely don't resubmit if you got a 50 you're fine if you got a 50. um now the backward check thing um i'll just say yes i did explain that but thank you for the honesty of asking the back with the bottom line with a backward check is what it means is absolute full credit yay i'm looking at your work i'm acknowledging that we are on the same page but I'm trying to go so fast that I'm not actually looking at exact answers or don't remember them in my, my mind. So I'm not guaranteeing you. When I do a backwards check, it's just my way of saying, don't now quote me that this answer is the answer. Like don't get into a fight on a bus or something with some like rough hooligan physicist who has the same question. Like I'm not guaranteeing it's the right answer. I'm moving fast. I'm just saying it's full credit. That's, that's what a backwards check means. Um, oh, you like my page, thank you. Um, Oh, and yes, another really, Samantha's question, or, oh, sorry, another, God, do that. Um, another person's question is, um, if, you have, if you have not yet received a grade yet for homework one, that just, you are going to. It just means I'm not totally finished. I'm falling behind. I'm hoping to finish in the middle of this class. So, it, and I'm going in alphabetical order. It's no reflection on anybody. If you have not gotten a grade on homework one yet, you will get it shortly. If you have gotten a grade on homework one, good. Um, uh, and nobody yet has gotten a grade on homework too. So, and let me really, this is what I mean about this being a good class. And um, like a couple of the questions that I just answered, that I just got in the chat, like a couple of those questions, it is true. I had actually answered them five minutes ago or whatever, but both the people asking basically acknowledged that they knew that was true or like 
they were basically saying somehow I know this is important and I missed it. Can you please say it? I want to say that's a, even that is a very good question. Like, I hate the fact that people are so afraid to admit that they have other things on their mind besides physics, that they'll never even ask anything about physics. It, really, really, even at, I mean, it's true. I don't want to say anything 50 times or something, or I don't want someone to like waltz into class late, like, and just like, you know, pull a big attitude and then say out of nowhere, like, so what's this class about? Like, that, you know, that's disrespectful. But for someone to say, I think you might've mentioned this, but I missed it. Can you say, totally, it just shows me that we're all on the same page and trying. So thank you. Yes, those are the answers to those questions. Screenshot. So should we take into consideration again? Oh, let me see this, hold on. If, wait, oh, the rubric. I knew that was gonna come. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, first of all, if you see a grade on homework one, I mean, anywhere, but if you see a grade on homework one, if you got one, already then yes that is the grade i intended to give you the rubric thing there that's true that on homework one a rubric appeared and would tend to indicate lots of things and then i you might have seen it wasn't even filled out or something like that um the short answer is that rubric sort of appeared on that homework assignment accidentally i didn't realize it was still there i did not use it for that homework assignment if you got a 50 that's it that's your grade um i will sometimes use that rubric and i will talk to you guys about why that, the rubric and blah blah but um no you're um, uh, the grade is what I intended it to be. Uh, another thing is if you ever think there's a confusion and somehow Google told you two different grades on the same assignment, especially if it told you a grade once and then it told you an update, um, well, certainly if the update is higher than the original, if you ever get two grades on the same thing and the more recent one is higher, then we're all good. Like that means I changed the grade for whatever reason and made it higher we're all, then that's your grade. It's not an average of the two grades, that's your grade. Uh, if for some reason you're, you get two grades and your grade goes down, then something weird happened and then you should tell me because I wouldn't normally do that. I wouldn't change someone's grade for the lower. So tell me if that ever happens. Um, any other, <laughs> again, if Google tells you you're late, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. If I tell you you're late, that's different. Any other, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'll look in the chats, we'll keep going. Uh, and it's, and it's, I really do appreciate that people are saying what they think about the pacing. I mean, obviously I like the compliment, but at any moment, if you think I'm going too slow or too fast, you tell me, um, and you are not insulting me. You are just challenging me to have fun at any speed. Um, it's like Mario Kart. Um, okay. Uh, so I think I want to go back to where we left off yesterday. Um, and I'm going to go back to right where we were right before class actually ended. Some people did hang out and get a little extra like reinforcement on it, which is great that they did that, but I don't want to assume that everybody was there for that. So um, we're gonna go back. Let me just get my screen. So I believe we're on question nine of homework one. Um, sorry, I believe, and stop me again if that's not true or something, but I believe we're question nine of homework one. I believe we're recording now. I believe you can see the whiteboard. Um, Right, um, and, in, and it technically, just to bring us back up to speed, technically, right, the, the question is, oh, I just did that backwards, sorry. All right, so, you know, given this situation that I think is most easily depicted by a picture, given this situation that we're talking about, a mass on a hook's law spring, yada, yada, that's, you know, initially stretched to some initial position of 15 centimeters or something, given that our, our question at hand is um, uh, at t equals one, what is x? Wait, I'm sorry, could someone indicate if, I'm suddenly afraid that my audio has gone up. Could someone indicate A, if they hear me? And actually, could someone make a noise indicating that they hear me? You're okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So given the situation, technically, and given a situation where we actually have numbers for K and M and X naught, technically the question is given T equals one, what's X? But my, you know, my first big point about physics is that's not really ever really the question. Like that might be the specific version of the question that we happen to be facing in the lab. But the real question is given, um, given this kind of situation in general, uh, 
uh, um, how does X depend on T in general? Like what we're really solving for here. We're solving for X in general as a function of T. That's right. That's what we want. We want some expression that um, very specifically treats X as a dependent variable. And this actually really matters and treats T as an independent variable. And we want the link between the two given these basic physics constraints uh, of a spring, et cetera. Uh, in here. Um, so, so um, that's what we want. And uh, what makes it a physics problem is, is the nature of those constraints. Like we've solved this a million times before for a semester, we get X as a function of T all the time in physics, for example, X equals one half a T squared plus B naught T. But when we got those X and T's, they were given other assumptions. Like we assumed a free fall, a constant acceleration. What is X as a function of T? And we got it for that here. When we say we want X as a function of T, when we're looking for X as a function of T, the real givens here mathematically are the real specific given mathematically is this. And what's always a given in classical physics is this. So again, just to bring us up, just this is like refresh of yesterday or catch us up from yesterday. So what we're saying to treat it, we're saying ultimately physics tells us this and math I can go back to that screen in a second if anybody wants, but definitions or math or whatever tell us this. So what we have in front of us is a math problem motivated by physics and the math problem is, oh, sorry, oh yeah, is this. And again, all of this presumably you wrote down yesterday and I hope you did, but I would also hope you're writing it again now just because even if you already wrote it, it's like, you're, it's practice. This is a derivation. I actually do ask for it on exams often. Like, so it's good. So if you're following me again now, that would just be all the better. I mean, even to write it again. Um, so we got this and then uh, we just rearranged it a little bit just to make it easier to stare at. And the traditional way to rearrange things to make them easy to work with in physics is traditionally what we like is to make a clear distinction between all variables and all constants. And we like to take all the constant terms and shove them sort of together, usually um, to the beginning of some expression. So um, once we rearranged everything, we found that we had, um, we had an expression. But the good news is, again, we have here an expression that contains no variables at all other than the ones we want, x and t. Um, and, uh, and it does contain both x and t. So the, this somehow, this expression contains the information we want, like literally, like the truth we're looking for, how x and t are related, is embedded in this equation. But, but it's not at all explicit. It's not usable, that information. It's hidden because what this equation is really telling us is something about the rate of change of the rate of change of x with respect to T and how that depends on something. But that's, we want X as a function of T. So our math job is to unpack this and turn and, and, and derive from it or infer from it X as a function of T. Um, and we're almost, and this almost catches us up to where we were yesterday. In other words, what we said was, if we have that, but we want, whoops, sorry. If this is what we know, And if what we want is this, right? And that, that's the unknown. Um, then what we've just stumbled on um, is what is called in math a differential equation um, and we need to solve it. And, I, um, and we're stumbling on it. And I, I do mean stumbling in a way. I mean, we're stumbling on it in the same way that Hooke and Newton stumbled on it. They knew enough physics to bring themselves to this mathematical point but they didn't, like Newton didn't take a class in differential equations. And I don't mean that sarcastically. And Hooke didn't take a class in uh, differential equations. Like differential equations exists as a class because somebody was able to figure out that it works 
from whatever they had in front of them. And then a bunch of other people were able to say, whoa, you were smart to think of that. But now that you show me that, that totally makes sense. Like if you gave me that, I can do that too. In other words, we only believe differential equations because actually we believe that we could have come up with them ourselves if that was our priority and we, and we had enough need. We do here. We just stumbled on a math situation that we now have a physics motivation to work out. The job is to invent the math rather than um, uh, to learn. I mean, our job is to invent the math um, because that's what it really means to do math. Um, and it's the only way to really understand it. Uh, for that reason, we had all this, oh, ultimately for that reason, I assigned like all this mathematical methods assignment the next day to, uh, to start flexing our muscles, getting ready for this. Um, this is a lot, what I'm trying to say is I know that you all know how to take derivatives. I mean, in principle, you've all had differential calculus and you've all in principle had integral calculus. You know how to take integrals. You may not love it, but you all know, know them when you see them. This is an equation that has derivatives in it, but it actually does deserve this extra special name, differential equation. Like when I say that this thing here that we are, are going to solve, um, when I say that this thing is a differential equation, I actually do mean something more than just it is an equation that involves derivatives. Um, it actually is a harder thing to unpack than just something that involves derivatives. Um, and that's why we take a couple of days to deal with it. Um, I need to show you why this is actually a differential equation. And, and, and that's part of what the homework, um, wait, well, I'm sorry, let me pause for a second. Um, I need to show you why, and I will in a couple of minutes, um, why it's actually special and, and why uh, we have to guess and check rather than just have some regular method ready to go for us. Um, um, I have to show you that. But first, what we were doing yesterday was the guess and check itself so that we can get satisfaction of an answer. So I'm going to continue with that for a second, for a moment. Where we had got, what, what we had said yesterday was we guess and really guess is such a conjecture really is the better word, but um, largely based on um, our uh, experience in the lab and our intuitions um, uh, and every single question that we just answered on the sheet one through nine, we, we, we feel pretty strongly that whatever this XT function is, it's gotta look something like that. It's gotta go up and down, uh, back and forth um, along one dimension of space as one dimension of time progresses. And it's uh, got to start at somewhere other than zero. Um, and so when we get, so, and that looks, you know, it's that kind of picture in my mind looks like a cosine. Um, when we guess cosine, like in some sense, one might say, why is it even a guess? It looks like once you draw that picture, doesn't it sort of have to be a cosine? Why I'm calling that a guess is um, for one thing, we're not, we're guessing that the motion doesn't look like this, right? Like, like I, I could have guessed that. I could have guessed what you call a sawtooth. Um, that, this picture that I just described, I mean, this graph that I just sketched, if the x-axis is stands for time and the y-axis is position x, I could have guessed that a mass on a spring going back and forth uh, creates data that fits this model. Um, and if I guess that, then I wouldn't call that a cosine. It would be some other harder mathematical function. Um, but there, there's two reasons I didn't guess that picture. One reason is, yeah, because it's math that would make it harder for me. And I'd rather always guess something first that I can work with. I, we, we always start with the simplest model possible um, and keep it until it fails to be comprehensive enough. But the other reason I wouldn't guess this, and maybe someone could, the other reason I wouldn't guess this is I really don't think it's right. I really don't think it's possible in nature. I, I think in other words, that this model is too simple looking in a way. It's too simple to think um, that the object's going back and forth in a manner that uh, uh, could be depicted with straight lines like this. Straight lines, like that's what it's supposed to look like. I don't think that's right because I don't think those corners are possible in nature, right? Every one of those corners represents um, a, a change from one negative constant velocity to another positive velocity or the reverse in no time at all. Every one of those corners represents, in other words, an infinite acceleration or an infinite force 
um, or an instantaneous turnaround, which I don't think is possible in nature. I think for something to uh, uh, something to slow all the way down, uh, and, and sorry, I think for something to go in one direction and then turn around in the other, it has to slow all the way down, pass through zero, and then start moving in the other side of the number line. You can't, in other words, nature I, or space and time are continuous, I think. Um, so, and I think that picture would, uh, would imply that somehow objects can hop over, the, you know, 30 miles an hour to negative 30 miles an hour without ever passing through zero miles an hour. They could somehow hop over uh, little holes in space and time. I don't think so. So instead, I guess something that looks smooth, right? Now, and so, and I guess, all right, I'll guess it's a cosine. I guessed yesterday that that our function was some sort of some sort of cosine function because cosine is a represents something smoothly going back and forth and back and forth forever, not hopping over any position, not hopping over any velocity. And this is what we discussed yesterday. In fact, if you really think about it and start taking derivatives of cosine, you can take derivatives of cosine forever and never land on zero, right? Like unlike the function y equals one half at squared, where you take the derivative with respect to t a couple of times, you'll end up with, you know, uh, uh, y double prime equals zero or something. That never happens with cosine, implying that any aspect of the motion you consider, velocity, acceleration, jerk, whip, they're all swinging smoothly back and forth over time. They're all all the derivatives are doing the same thing that the motion itself is doing. And if you really think about it, that would have to be the case, as crazy as that sounds. It, because if any one of the derivatives um, uh, isn't smooth, that means that the, its graph has a edge, a sharp edge or uh, in it. And the graph of its derivative has a hole in it. And that would imply a hole in space or time. I don't think so. So there's something very powerful about this cosine guess that sounds very nice. And then we checked it yesterday. So, oh, and then we went through an argument. We said, okay, it's gonna be some kind of cosine, but then there have to be some constants in there to take care of units and other, fact, and other um, uh, initial conditions that we know. So I'm gonna skip that, that we did that yesterday, but we ended up guessing that the exact function was this. So here, some, someone needs to be let in. Okay, we guessed something like that, again, that, Please, you know, replay the tape from yesterday when you get it, if, if that's confusing where I got that from. But then that was our guess. That it, we're saying that how does that position depend on time? We think it depends on it this way, um, um, this way that has two sort of constant terms built uh, into it. Um, and this is our guess as to a function that meets this description, like uh, uh, to solve a differential, I mean, remember, I guess what I'm trying to say is you spend a long time in math and science getting used to being given functions as information and then using those functions to solve for uh, values, right? Like you can be told x equals one f a t squared plus b naught t and then t equals seven. So what's x? Like that's what we're sort of used to doing in math and science. We're used to thinking of functions as stuff we uh, uh, use to help answer questions. But here what I'm saying is no, the function is the answer we're looking for. We're looking for the original equation. And what we have to work with is some information about its derivatives. So to know whether our guess is right or wrong, let's check whether it does what its derivatives are supposed to do, th that being the one original knowledge that we had. So to check, we differentiated twice, right? We, well, we differentiate once, we get this. We're checking our function, see, saying, well, okay, well, the derivative of it, if we're right, I mean, well, the, whether we're right or wrong, the derivative of that function is de, 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 I believe, stop me wrong, and that's knowing a trigonometric derivative, and that's chain rule also. Then we said, um, we have to take the derivative again, because our whole original differential equation at, uh, is a second order. Technically, this is a second order differential equation simply because it's uh, making reference to a second derivative. Um, 
So we take the derivative again and we get this. Oh, sorry. And we take, and here's where we're almost, and I know again, I apologize to any, oh wait, did I feel like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, we're almost at the point where we left off yesterday. Um, we take the derivative again, we get this. Oh, and, and I can start noticing in my mind now, like, like informally, look what's happening here. I, I, my original function that I'm checking out, my original function is this thing, x equals cosine. I take the derivative twice and I get back what's looking very similar to that original function, like the cosine comes back again. But but the difference, but it's not identical because there's like a negative sign before it and there's a bunch of letters before it that I think are constants. And just, you know, intuitively let me tell myself, oh wait, that's looking good. That's looking good because that's my original objective. Like the original equation says the kind of x you're looking for, this x that you're looking for, this x that you're looking for has to be the kind of x for which when you differentiate it twice, you get back itself times some sort of numbers times a negative sign. Well, that's what seems to be happening. So that's like why I'm happy and excited. This is looking good. Now, let me actually really, really see. So um, go back. Um, so let me just, you know, rearrange things to make them convenient and say, oh, okay, multiplication is commutative. So I could, oh, I, no, I already have it arranged. I'm sorry, I've been arranging it nicely. Anyway, I could say, I could say, oh, wait a minute, this bit here, isn't that X? I don't mean x factorial, but I'm just saying, wait, that whole thing right there, sitting there is the original x. So apparently I am, it seems to me, if I guess that x, if I guess that x and differentiate it twice, it seems that what I get back is negative, some weird constant times the original x. Oh, that's looking very much like what I wanted. And let me say, it's not, I, the problem with math is math always makes everything look obvious, but just because this is true doesn't mean it's obvious. Like, note, if I had guessed something else, if I had guessed something like x equals one half at squared, then if I differentiated that twice, I am not the x, there's not going to be an x in the answer. I, if I differentiate it twice, I get a. And maybe I'm saying that too fast, but I'm saying what's happening right here is interesting, partly because it only happens if I guessed right. It wouldn't happen for just any random guess. So now I have this second derivative of x with respect to t equals negative times some constant times x. Um, so, so we have, sorry. So we're almost there, but this, this is the part that people uh, need to see. Our original, we're, we're looking for an X, right? We're looking for an X. We need an X that satisfies this, this constraint at the bottom that satisfies, that solves the differential equation. We need an X, in other words, for which it is the case that when you differentiate it twice um, in per time, you get back itself times some constant times a negative sign. Now, I'm saying some constant, like parentheses k over m. Well, you know, it really is some constant divided by some other constant, right? I mean, k, o, I mean, I hope everybody agrees with me that k and m are constants. Um, 
But I also want to remind all of us that a constant is some number, a number divided by some other number is yet just some other number. I never knew what the numbers were in the first place and I never cared. I just care that they are some number that doesn't change throughout the course of a spring motion. So, so in other words, the original condition, because of physics happened to be written down like this, but this business in the parentheses amounts to just some constant. Again, in other words, a constant divided by a constant is still a constant. Um, so what's in parentheses, K over M, I could have called anything. I could call it like B, or I could call it, I wouldn't call it X or Y or Z, right? Cause those are, or T, cause those are like variable names, but I could have called it anything. I could have called, like, I could say, let B stand for K over M or even more conveniently, I could say, let Omega, just cause that seems to, you know, be a name that seems relevant in our lives right now. I could say, could I, I could let K over M be the name Omega, but you know, just as easily and best of all, I could, whoop, 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 I could, I could say, let the name of K over M be not even just the Greek letter Omega, but let's just call it Omega squared. Like, is that a weird thing to do? Yes, it's, a, it's definitely a weird thing to do if I have no reason for doing it. It's a slight complication, to, but there's no reason I can't, right? In other words, I, I, um, I could call it Omega squared or put another way, I could give the name Omega. I could say that K is a constant, M is a constant. And when you take the square root of one over the other, you get some other constant, which we're just gonna call omega. Like we could do that, right? And it would be dumb to do it if we had no reason. But here we have a reason, which is that we just found out that, that the guess we made, uh, we found out that the guess we made sorry, the guess we made said, um, led us to this conclusion. And if the original thing we were trying to satisfy looked exactly the same, but just was using a different name for the constant, that's what I, in fact, I'm saying, like, uh, we, we shouldn't be, what I'm saying is a, a constant, a name for a constant is just a name for a constant. So the, um, as long as, so I'm saying that our guess is right. We have solved the differential equation if and only if uh, by, uh, the name omega actually stands for the square root of whatever's named k divided by whatever is named m. Um, Um, uh, and this is a funny thing. Like I'm saying if uh, IFF means if and only if. So I'm saying we were trying to solve a differential equation. We we're trying to look for a function that would be a, that would solve it. That would be a solution to a differential equation. In other words, would be, would be uh, logically consistent with it, would contain the same information as it. Um, that's what we were looking for. What we hit by checking out our guess, what we actually find is Oh, we've got something that works as a solution as long as we're willing to accept yada, yada, yada. So it, it sounds like a kind of a deal um, squisher, but in fact, the yada, yada, yada that I'm very, very willing to accept is 
is actually more information that I just gained. Like I'm saying in my attempt to solve, in our attempt to solve this differential equation, actually what we really get is a solution plus an extra bit of information, which is that, which is this bit of information, W equals, uh, omega equals square root of K over M or IE, IE, that the real solution that we've really derived, the solution that I'm very confident of now is, is this, Like what we've really found then, we have found a solution to that differential equation. It is what I just wrote here. I am not, by the way, saying it's the only solution. It actually is not. There's going to be other solutions, but it is a solution. It's something that works, which means in effect, we just used some physics, uh, uh, um, um, what's it? So we used some physics information and some mathematical methods to in effect come up with our a new physics formula, if you like. Like, I don't actually like to think of it that way, but what I'm saying now we have here, this thing is now an equation that we can trust for all time. Um, we can trust for all time to be as, this is, oh, that's a bad color, home. this from now on, I mean, and you can memorize it. I, I don't think that's the best way to handle it, but you, you could certainly rely on this thing from now on as this is an equation of motion for what I'm going to start calling SHO, a simple harmonic oscillator. Like I'll be more rigorous about that momentarily, but if you know, any, if we, this thing that's going back and forth on a spring, you know, oscillation needs to go back and forth. So this oscillator that we're looking at, I'm saying from here on in, x, this equation with the uh, cosine in it, describes that with the same consistency and power and in scope as x equals one half at squared describes free fall or something. This is, and this is the equation of motion for oscillation in the sense that it is the thing a person could use to predict where something is going to be at a certain amount of time uh, or how long it will take something to get somewhere. Like this is what brings it back to fundamental physics. Um, uh, and I'm confident of it because the derivatives just checked out. Um, but more, more, more. Um, uh, so you need to know how to derive this, but you also need uh, just to know it, to use it. It's going to come up a lot. Um, but as far as this thing, this is sort of the weird bit of it. I mean, this is the really powerful bit that we just got that. Oh, so, oh sorry, sorry. Can I please? Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. The chat. I got to watch the chat thing. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Wait, that's a good question. I'm sorry. Oh, two. oh yes. Great question. Okay, so hold on. First, the totally reasonable question. Okay, so first of all, yeah, I'm going to start saying SHO a lot, and I think it, I, it uses that in the video title or something. But so SHO stands for simple harmonic oscillation. Um, um, by oscillation, we mean, and yeah, and this is like the top, our first topic of this class is simple harmonic oscillation. Um, yeah, it's a, and it's chapter, I think it's chapter 15 in the book, uh, if you have the book. But if you don't have the book, don't worry about it um, for the moment. Uh, um, but anyway, yeah, what, it's th what it means is oscillation
Okay, so first of all, oscillation in general means anything that's going back and forth and going, sorry, anything that's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth is oscillation, right? Like, so certainly this mass on this spring going back and forth between two positions is oscillation. Um, fans that you buy, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, desktop fans that are swinging around while, while the blades turn, those are often called oscillation because they swing back and forth, even though it's not in a straight line like this. Um, pendulums that swing back and forth in an arc of a circle, which I guess was your lab today or soon, um, those are anything that goes back and forth repeatedly in a cycle of any kind, complex or simple, is called oscillation. Um, but, but, the, but harmonic is a very particular kind of oscillation that we are now, right now, for the first time studying. Um, and I'll cut to the chase and say right now, what, what if harmonic, to be harmonic means to be a very specific, very reliable kind of oscillation that not all, which not all oscillations are, what it means to be harmonic, oh, sorry, oh, good, okay. What it means to be harmonic um, in most technical, in one way of speaking, harmonic means a system that could be described mathematically this way, that doesn't, that sounds like uh, an evasive answer. But I'll tell you what it really means in a second. This is a mouthful, and, and if this question came up yesterday and I didn't really answer it, I apologize, but that, that's because it's actually a lot, we sort of can see the answer better now, now that we've done this homework. What it really means to be harmonic actually is to be everything that this homework is about, i.e. to be a harmonic oscillator means to be any kind of oscillator that for which the mathematical description is ultimately identical to this mathematical description that we're developing for a mass on a spring. In other words, if I can prove that a pendulum, a certain pendulum under certain conditions, if I can prove that a pendulum is mathematically acting just like this mass on this spring, then I would say that that pendulum is a harmonic oscillator. But if the math is different, then I wouldn't. But what is it about the math that I'm really focused on here? I, so I'm really saying anything that follows Hooke's law in some, math, in some generalized mathematical way is a harmonic oscillator. But what I really, really mean that now we can see for the first time really what harmonic really means in strictest terms so if i do it well harmonic means Now, this is a big thing that I'm writing here. It, it, uh, this, is a, this is definitely not something I said yesterday. Like, and, and it's big and it may even sound obvious or simple, but this is now new information for, for sure. Partly because someone just asked, but partly because this is where we're going with this. We're making a big, our big finding from yesterday in a way, our big finding was twofold. We found a solution to our differential equation, i.e. we found a way to describe oscillators. But in the process, we also found that that description told us something about the oscillation. Um, we got an expression, um, we got an expression for omega that was based on some things, but not based on x naught. This is, this is actually a, a tremendous um, uh, uh, piece of information, as simple as it looks. But it's, it's not possible to see how tremendous this information is until we're sure we understand what omega is. That is, that is. But I am saying the strict definition, hold on. 
the strict definition, like the answer to somebody's question, what is harmonic oscillation? The strict answer is it is any oscillation for which uh, the omega is independent of the x naught, i.e. it's any oscillation for which the frequency or technically the angular frequency is independent of the amplitude. Now I'm introducing these words for the first time right here. I know you've seen words like this in other classes stuff, but definitely this is the first time I'm using these words in this context of oscillation. Um, um, and uh, so let's, so I'm gonna be very, so I'm, I'm answering the question. The question is, what is harmonic oscillation? It's oscillation for which the frequency and the amplitude do not depend on one another. They are two knobs that can be tweaked separately. What does that actually mean in English? Or what does that mean in the reality of space and time? Or like, how do I know that? Like, well, what do those terms even mean? All fair questions, that's what I wanna get at now. Um, omega, Like I'm focusing a lot of attention on this omega. This omega term turns out to be very important. And it's, it's usually a, it can be a stumbling block for people because it becomes so important, but it sort of sneaks in on us, this omega. Like it seems like it kind of just sneaks in um, under radar and then blows up before anybody has a chance to really understand how it, how it came into our lives or what it, what it is. That's what I want to tell you now. Like, like, let me remind you where the omega, you, if you're, in other words, if you're getting the sense that omega is important, but you're also getting the sense you're not really sure what you're supposed to do with omega or what it is, that's fair. I mean, that would not be surprising. So let's back up and look where omega came from in the first place. In the first place, omega was just a name that we made up for some constant term that we felt should be uh, in our expression. And all, and all we knew about it was units i mean units were what told us that it had to be there and um so originally omega was some constant numerical value and by constant that would mean for a given situation right like as one mass is going back and forth on a spring there's question. some oh sorry sorry yeah 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 Good yeah. question um somebody wrote something um that Kind of makes sense. Um, we have to derive these equations in exams, or yeah, um... you, you actually do. Yeah, no, that is a fair question. Here, here, these like the equation. One time somewhere in the exam, you are explicitly asked to derive them. You do need to know how to derive them, and you do show that in the exam. But then anywhere else you need them or something, anything else based on them, you don't have to re-derive them every time and reinvent the wheel. Like once you once show somewhere on the exam that you could derive it because I ask then everywhere else is just fair game to just use. Does that make sense? But yeah, you so, do need to, all the stuff that I'm spending time on now, you do need to know actually, yeah, so or, or understand. Specify sure. that you're asking for the derivation, then we have to show it? That's what I'm saying, exactly, yes, that's right. If I don't, then you don't, that's right. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so this would be something that's on our given sheet, but a hypothetical question could be like, oh, show me this derivation. Um, yes, and, uh, and when you say on the given sheet, that's right. Wait, repeat the part you said about the given sheet, though. I just missed that. Uh, what? This um, equation that we just derived, would that be something that's on our given sheet? Right. That's, okay. I, I thought that's what you said. That's also a very good question. I mean, it might even sound like the same question, but that is a slightly different, also good question. That's what I'm really kind of trying to say is that if it's just up to, if in my ideal world, to be honest, let me, wait, hold on. Just as a quick, I don't want to ruin this, as a quick, like, digression. It, honestly, if I'm in my ideal world, the two equations that I just wrote down under sidebar, those would be in your given sheet, right? But everything we just got, yeah, we derived from given. So in principle, I wouldn't put what we just derived in the given sheet because I do feel like you should know it and be able to derive it. But I wouldn't punish anybody 
for not rederiving every time they use it. That, that's in principle. Like in my ideal world, honestly, the thing we just got wouldn't be on a given sheet, whereas things like F equals negative KX would be. However, I think realistically, I think you're right. I think that what's in the given sheet, at the very least, what's probably in the given sheet is something like this, which already is kind of derived. Um, I can't guarantee that that cosine expression will be in the given sheet because that is right. I do really want people to understand where it's coming from. And, and frankly, to everybody, this seems already like this kind of class, like you're, we're going to use it so many times that you're going to accidentally memorize, mo I think, anyway. So I, but right, you do need to know this derivation though, one way or another. And, and, and oh, you can remind me because I, I will, part of the reason I give everybody a practice exam is exactly so that you can have no surprises about things like what's on the given sheet. So absolutely, when I give you the practice exam, it'll have the given sheet in it. And if not, like, please remind me. And I'll try to give you, if someone just reminds me, I'll just try to post the given sheet tonight or something. Like I have no problem doing that. It's not meant to be a mystery. Uh, I just, so just remind me. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. So here, uh, what was I saying? That was a sad one. Oh, all we knew about Omega um, is that it had to have, all we knew is that Omega had to be some constant value whose units were radians per second, right? It, like it had to be there just because something of those units had to be there. And that's honestly all we ever knew about it. And then we gave it a name, which happened to be a Greek letter, which then looks like, makes it look like we know what we're talking about, or it looks like we've already figured something out about it, but you really gotta, everybody's really gotta realize it's just a name. And why did we choose that particular Greek letter? Well, sure. Oh my God. Can you all hear that? Like the world rushing? Well, anyway. Um, wait, you can still hear me though, yes? Audio indication, maybe? Yes. Okay, yeah. all right, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, 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 um. Yeah, we gave a name, we gave the particular name Omega because we're playing Monday morning quarterback, so to speak. Like, of course, because it turns out that it's, we know other things that we call Omega that we find out that this links to, it all makes it convenient to give it that name. But it is just a name and all we know is radians per second, but that's a lot to know. Like, let's stop and think about it for a second. If, if Omega is supposed to describe, if Omega is some constant term, um, yeah, I mean, if omega is some constant term that somehow um, is related to this graph, this cosine graph of x versus t, um, it's in radians per second. Second is the independent variable. That right there says it's a rate of some kind, right? We, I mean, we, we're used to meters per second. That's a rate called velocity. Um, um, you could, and you could imagine miles per second or miles per meter. This is clearly a rate but it's not distance units per time units, it's radians per time units. So it's a funny kind of rate, right? This is a rate, omega, um, of some kind, but it's not measuring how far in space we go per time. It's measuring something about angles. Now, what the heck do angles have to do with anything? Well, they don't as such. They do only once we're talking about cosines. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, Omega, if you think about it, has to be a measurement of how rapidly this cosine graph is oscillating back and forth. Like, like assuming that these two axes, the two following axes are drawn to the same scale, presumably, okay, obviously that's hideous, but if everything else about these two graphs that I just drew were the same, but the only difference is like there's two, two humps per, per, per square on the bottom graph and there's one hump per square on the top or something, like what's different about these two graphs is omega. Omega is the rate at which we're zooming through radians every second. Um, uh, so, uh, um, and, uh, and why radians or where they're coming from, the whole idea is ultimately that
if you think of what I'm trying to say is this, if you think of radians, well, oh, let me read this first because I know my handwriting is vaguely axe murderish actually. Um, hold on. Um, don't get me wrong. Some of my best friends are axe murderers, whatever. Um, what I'm saying here is oscillation is cyclical. So the most appropriate mathematical treatment will involve circles. Um, the radians are popping up all of a sudden and making everybody think in terms of angles perhaps. And it seems like there's no angle to be found in this mass on a straight, like it seems like angles are completely irrelevant um, to something going back and forth in a straight line. But they're not, they, and they are irrelevant if you think of an angle as some uh, intersection of two lines. If you think of an angle as, sorry, I, if you think of an angle, okay. Some people think of angles like that. Of course, that is an angle right there, sure, sure. But don't get too hung up on the fact that it's an intersection between two lines. And what it's certain, to measure an angle, to measure an angle is not to measure the distance between two lines, right? Like to say that one angle is bigger than another is not just to say that the distance between those two green arrows on the top is a greater distance than the two green arrows on the bottom. No, that's silly, right? Because where are we measuring the, like the distance between the arrows is obviously getting greater and greater as you get more and more spread out. So we're not, if you want to measure the distance, be, uh, we, I don't even know where to measure between those two lines if an angle means how far apart the lines are. Um, and if I'm, uh, um, and besides, if I just were literally comparing how far apart those lines were, I would just be talking about distances and I wouldn't need this whole concept of an angle. What an angle really, really is, if you think about it, is an angle is a portion of a circle. To say, to say that that thing that I just drew, to, to say that if I draw this angle right here, and if I assume that everybody kind of recognizes that, oh, that's a right angle, or that's a 90 degree angle, every, whatever you call it, 90 degrees, right angle, everybody recognizes it. What they're recognizing it, whether I drew it like this, or I drew it like this, or what, it has nothing to do with the distance between the two lines that everybody's recognizing that as a 90 degree angle. What everybody's really recognizing is that that's a quarter of a circle, if you think about it, right? I mean, and that's what's always true about it. Like, whether the circle is that small or that big, a 90 degree angle is a fourth of a circle. Um, what angles really are, are portions of circles when we do trigonometric functions to angles, what we're really discussing is uh, functions of portions of cycles, right? In short, what I'm really saying is, how am I just, okay, I'm saying angular, I'm saying this omega thing, whatever it is, this thing that's measuring radians per second for something that we're describing with a cosine function, what it's really measuring is the rate of um, the, the rate of progress through portions of a cycle. Like the reason we're not, we're, we're identifying some mass on a spring the reason we're focusing so heavily on something like omega rather than good old v for velocities, we're talking about something here that's changing its velocity at every moment. It's also changing its acceleration at every moment. It's changing its everything at every moment. But yet something seems so simple about it, we should be able to analyze it. The thing that's simple about an oscillator is the oscillation, is the rate at which it repeats its cycles, not any other kind of rate. The rate at which it cycles is what we um, measure with omega and we ultimately call angular, oh, I'll write on the next page, sorry. We ultimately say that omega stands, omega stands for what we ultimately call angular frequency. So it's a rate, it's a rate in time, but it's a rate of frequency, like how often you complete something that you are being, uh, that you are repeating over and over again. Um, that's a more relevant rate of, uh, of motion, a more relevant way to describe this kind of thing. Um, 
frequency specifically, okay, I'm gonna now use, I'm gonna, from now on, lowercase f, that's a lowercase script f that I just drew. Sorry, um, f is gonna stand for standard frequency, like the very concept of frequency itself, I wanna define. Um, Um, uh, so I'm saying omega stands for angular frequency. A angular is modifying the word frequency. Frequency in general, like even if we didn't have omega, e b before we even had this discussion of omega, I could say independently that frequency as a concept is the rate at which something completes cycles. Like frequency does not apply to a non-cyclical type of motion. Something just dropping in free fall doesn't have a frequency, but something that's doing a process over and over and over again has a frequency that can be measured in cycles um, completed per second. Maybe that number might change over time. Maybe you might have to measure an average frequency, but frequency is number of cycles per second. The units in which we measure it are just that, cycles per second. But then for convenience and so forth, we make up this name. Um, we from here on uh, decree that one hertz, like one H-E-R-T-Z, sort of unfortunate one, but one hertz by definition from now on will equal one cycle per second. So this is like a derived SI unit or MKS unit. Um, uh, and that will mean that from now on, for example, like one megahertz means one million cycles per second. So like if the radio station you listen to, you know, is 104.3 um, um, FM, what that means is 104.3 megahertz on your FM dial. That literally means it brought some something is propagating to your radio receiver at uh, and vibrating back and forth at a rate of 104.3 million cycles per second. That is literally what that means. Um, in fact, it's a light wave, which is crazy. Um, but so to listen to a station 104.3 FM is to listen is to receive information that is somehow vibrating back and forth at 104.3 million cycles per second. And what does FM stand for, by the way? It stands for frequency modulation, to modulate is to change. So that, that, it's all the same word, in other words. That's what frequency is, the cycles per second. Now that's, uh, more specifically, that's standard frequency. Like frequency itself is the concept and the measurement of cycles per second. But then what we're saying here, okay, so frequency is like a physical concept in the world that we can measure and we can hopefully picture sort of, um, uh, uh, even if we don't know a lot of math. But, but we're saying that one circle, um, if you go a uh, full way around a circle, that's one full circle. Well, that's not, that's, an angle, right? I mean, in other words, a 90 degree angle is a fourth of a circle. A 180 degree angle is a half of a circle. To go a full circle is to go what you might, we might be used to calling a 360 degree angle, but really is more properly thought of in math, you know, um, as a two pi radian angle. To go fully around the circle is to travel, sure, 360 degrees, but we sort of have to, do better than that is to travel two pi radians, right? There's, in other words, there's two, in other words, um, well, in other words, there's two pi radians per every circle. So if we want to describe something that's physically cyclical, we already have a whole mathematical world built in, in our understanding of circles that we can conveniently use here um, as and the conversion between the physical reality and the mathematical language is is 
literally this, that as long as we always remember that there's two pi radians for every cycle, then, um, then we can say, right, um, um, frequency is how many times you do a cycle per second. Angular frequency is how many radians you do per second. There are two pi radians to every cycle. Um, so angular, so omega looks like a crazy concept, but really all omega is, is the, the concept of frequency times a small conversion factor of two pi. Really, and, and why do we bother with that? Because, um, uh, so in other words, frequency is more physically intuitive. Omega is more mathematically useful. Um, and in the day, what I'm really, in the end of the day, what I'm really saying is omega, if omega measures angular frequency, it's measuring the same thing as any frequency tick-tock counter would do. Omega is measuring how many times the mass goes back and forth in its cyclical oscillation. Omega is the rate at which the mass goes back and forth completing cycles. The catch is just that omega doesn't count. Um, it doesn't count in, sorry. The so only difference between, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, go, go, yes, sorry. So then from there, would we be able to relate frequency and period as well? Absolutely, that's exactly the next step. Beautiful, yes, totally. Let me write one thing, but yes, that's totally where all this is going. Did I say yes? Yes, 100%. Um, I just lost my, my train of thought, just crashed at the station, though, not because of you. Um, uh, the, 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 the Omega. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so just reminding everybody, you know, if angle by definition, if angle really what angle is, is arc length per radius. Arc length is a length, radius is a length, right? If what an angle really is, and what that equation at the top, theta, you know, by definition is S over R. Sometimes people write it X over R. I'm saying that's the best way to think of an angle for sure. An angle is the ratio of arc length to radius, which really just means angle is, um, uh, fraction of circle, um, um, like bigger, in other words, in any given one circle, the bigger arc length you're cutting out, the bigger of an angle you're cutting out in that circle. And as long as you're always in the same circle, then, then arc length that you travel and angle are one in the same concept. We just say divide by R to take into account that then if you go to a bigger circle, of course, if you go to a circle with a radius that's twice as big, then you'll get twice as much arc length for any one given angle so, so that R in the denominator is really just normalizing all. It's just saying, is if you want a picture angle, picture arc length, how much of a given circle you cut out its arc length, but just always just assume that that circle has a radius of one and then we'll all be consistent. That, that's all that that equation is trying to say, but what it then means, it tells me, okay, if I measure angles that way in radians, if I go around a whole circle, I've gone around two pi radians, that means one whole circle One whole circle is, sorry, is, approximate, is approximately equal to um, like six radians, like two pi, remember pi is just a number, right? It happens to be a fancy number that's not, you know, that has like a long decimal expansion, um, but it's just a number. Pi is just a number that's a little bit more than three. And radians are just what we're saying, just a unit of angle measurement. So if to say that going around a whole circle is to go two pi radians really, really means to go around a whole circle is to go approximately 
two times the number pi radians, i.e. approximately six radians, i.e. when you get right down to it, this is all just a secret background, sneaky way of teaching the lesson on what the heck a radian is because frankly, everybody always hates radians before they come to this class and everybody like uses them as little as possible and thinks that you're just annoying. So I want to say here, but we have to use them all the time in this class. So what is one radian really after all this big discussion that I'm saying in this romp and this frolic? What I'm really getting at is a radian is a sixth of a circle. I mean, a sixth of a cycle, I should say. Like really, 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 if you really follow every step of what I'm saying, each one of which I know itself is maybe boring or hopefully obvious, in the end of the day, if you believe that there's two pi radians to a circle, but you believe you're not really sure what the point of radians are or what they mean or whatever, then what I'm saying is just flip it in your mind. What a radian is, is a sixth of a circle, approximately. A radian is a sixth of a circle. It's a, a little bit less than 60 degrees. That's what a radian is, a little bit less than 60 degrees. Just as, so you can have a mental picture of what one radian is. It's about, literally, a radian is the amount of arc length you have to go. Um, I mean, I mean, what one radian is, is the amount of angle that you sweep out if you literally go up an arc length that's one unit, one radial unit up. Um, but uh, to say that, uh, um, to say that a radian is a sixth of a cycle brings us now back to a period and what someone who I didn't I missed it, maybe Aaliyah, someone just asked correctly, um, like how this all brings us back to physics is omega itself is measure, angular frequency measures frequency at which we complete sixths of cycles, okay? Like omega is the same thing as F, only they differ by, literally by a factor of six. If, if I ran around, so if I run around the track one time per second, I would say my frequency is one cycle per second. I would say my angular frequency is two pi radians per second. If like, it's that simple where it's just that angular frequency measures, um, gives me a point for every sixth of a cycle I do instead of um, waiting a full cycle. And, and yes, exactly. If, if, if I run five laps around the track, that means my freak per second, which is ridiculous. But okay, five laps per hour. Then my frequency is five laps per hour. Um, I could right away infer from that that each of my laps takes me a fifth of an hour, i.e. Oh, I'm sorry. 12 minutes. Thank you, very good. I didn't mean to, yes, thank you, that's awesome. Oh, and does that mean I have to, you don't mean I have 12 minutes left of class, do you? Oh, right. oh yeah, but 12 minutes to do the lap, right. All right, exactly. Um, So if we define capital T to mean period, if, and a period is the amount of time that it takes to do a cycle, that's just the flip concept of frequency, right? Frequency is cycles per second, period is seconds per cycle. So necessarily, period and frequency are reciprocals of each other. Um, and frequency, we said, was this. And so, um, all these three, oh, sorry, oh, that, that's actually not a helpful way to write it. I'm so sorry. What I just wrote was true. If you just wrote it, you don't have to erase it. It's not wrong, it's just not as helpful as. So I'm saying, 
I'm saying we have, yeah, three constant values that could be used to describe the motion of an oscillator. We could describe it in terms of its frequency back and forth cycles per second. We could describe it in terms of the amount of time for each cycle, that would be period. Or we could describe it in terms of angular frequency, that would be radians um, uh, per second. If we know one of these three things, we automatically know the other two. They're all just three different ways of saying the same information. If we know one, we automatically know the other two. But the reason we want to always have these three ideas in our mind is, is uh, because um, p one is the most direct and easiest to work with when we're mathematically analyzing. That's omega. Like the math is impossible without omega because omega because for the math we need to treat cycles as circles. But on the other end of the spectrum, t is absolutely the easiest most straightforward and reliable to measure and picture. Like for any oscillate, so I'll just all write that. So they're all interchangeable. T, F, and W, uh, and omega. All interdependent. All constant, or each of them is a constant. Um, but but this is a typical physics thing like we it in a sense this is our spec this is our way of going back and forth between what we can actually talk about in the real world. Like you can set a pendulum, or, I'm sorry, you could set a mass on a spring back and forth. And as you did in lab, I think, you know, with a stopwatch measure how much time it takes for this thing to complete cycles. And you can learn things about it from that. Um, but then you can convert that into omega by two steps so that you can mathematically analyze that information. So that's why we have all three. But once you know one, you know automatically the other two. These are also examples of things that it definitely, you want to be able to go back and forth between them on an exam, like fluidly and comfortably. I don't think I waste your time by directly asking questions like, well, I take that back. You, you need to fluidly go back and forth between these on an exam. Um, but now to bring it all the way back to our actual question at hand. Um, um, if, if, so all of this, what I was just doing, was kind of expanding what I believe must be true of omega. Just the minute we just introduced omega as a placeholder, we introduced it by saying there's got to be something there that's measuring in those units, in some particular set of units. But the more we think about the units um, and the mathematical context, the more we can just realize what that measurement means. It, it means angular frequency in the manner that I'm saying. Um, so we end up what we say what omega really means to us, what it's measuring, what it's doing, uh, how it's defined is really, it's like the rate at which something oscillates per time uh, but measured in radians rather than cycles, right? So just, just from, I'm just, so based on what we just said one screen ago, omega sort of by definition is the rate of, of cycle portions per time. But what we found that it is here for this example, I mean, for this topic, right? Here's where triple equal sign, double equal sign distinction I think is important. And I think we're, I'm teaching, both, we're trying, we've just sort of uncovered two things at the same time. We've uncovered this idea of omega that we think it seems useful for describing oscillation. The idea of omega is cycles per time measured in cycle six, right? So that's the triple equal sign. That's what omega means and how to use it. But it turns out that for any harmonically oscillating system, we just did the math for that, solved the differential equation, and we found out double equal sign, like we discover for, certain, for a mass on a spring, 
the omega will be equal to square root of k over m. Like that's a very different statement. I'm not saying that that's what it means. I'm not saying omega means anything about square roots. I'm saying it turns out that we can find out what omega is if we perform this uh, computation on, on, on these constants. And the reason I believe that is what we did with the different, or the, I'm sorry, the reason we even suggested this double equal sign is because of the differential equation stuff. But the reason I might start to grow in confidence is like, let's look at units for a second. Um, Like what this seems to be saying is whoop, that if you have a mass on a spring and you know how strong the spring is and you know how massive the mass is, you know, if you divide one by the other and take the square root, then you'll immediately know how rapidly this mass is going to oscillate back and forth. Like that's what this seems to be suggesting. And that's, that would be pretty, if that's true, that's very useful. Should I believe it? Well, one way to know whether I should believe it or not is to check the units, right? So let's do that. Like the left side is supposed to be in... The left side is supposed to be in radians per second. Let's look at the right side where we have square root of k over m. What's k? Well, k came from Hooke's law. k is the spring strength. The units of k are units of force per displacement. In other words, the units of k better be something like newtons per, and this is going to get confusing notation wise, but newtons per meter, like that's K, I just wrote newton is newtons per meter. That's all supposed to be over mass, mass, which is also an M unfortunately, but mass is supposed to be measured in kilograms, right? So the right side seems to be something like newtons per meter, um, all, all over kilograms. That's a little confusing. What does that amount to? I'm going to the next page. Tell me if you want me to go back. But I'm saying well, it's newtons per meter, and the whole thing is per kilogram. So the kilograms is in, like the mass is in the denominator here. It's not in the numerator. So we have that, like I don't like a fraction within fractions, way too complicated for my brain to deal with, but, but one fourth divided by three is one twelfth. And that's the kind of thing that's going on here. So I have newtons over meters times kilograms, but, sorry. Um, newtons, from Newton's law, from math net equals MA, a newton is, is a kilogram, it, F net equals MA. So it's a mass times an acceleration. So it's a kilogram times mass per, sorry, it's a kilogram times meter per second squared all over meters times kilogram, right? And th that second squared goes down into the denominator. That's always super annoying. Everybody has to think about that in their own way. But I believe I'm saying this. Right, we have kilograms times meters. To, so now M stands for meter here, not for mass, if you, because we're talking about units. Kilograms times mass all over mass, um, sorry, I just said it. Kilograms times meters all over meters times kilograms times second squared. Well, that's nice, because at least we'll get some of this going on. And it appears what we're saying is that this whole right side equals equals bleh per seconds squared, right? And what was omega supposed to be? Omega was supposed to be something per second, wait, second squared. No, am I being crazy now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. radical. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? Hello? Isn't what? it all in a radical? Right, right, Ex beautiful, thank you. Yes, exactly. For a minute, I was panicked and you, you said that in the nick of time. Yes, it's in a radical. Um, um, so, uh, right. I don't know, I'm trying to figure out how to write that without confusing everybody, but 
Yeah, omega is okay, equals. The whole thing is supposed to be in a radical, right? Because omega is supposed to be square root of k over m. So this whole thing is supposed to be under a radical, as she said, which means, according to everything we just checked, the units of omega, sorry, the units of square root of k over m are one over seconds. And that looks pretty good because the frequency is supposed to be something per seconds. The only thing is, the only, so it's looking good is what I'm saying, but I'm also saying, but wait, one thing, hold on. Like what, like what happened to the radians? Like technically shouldn't omega, like, you know, omega is supposed to be itself in radians per second. So this is all looking good to me and looking like it makes sense, but I might very justifiably be wondering you know, what happened to the radian. Actually, does anybody have it? This is still right. We did not make a mistake. Um, it's the last thing to resolve and then we'll move on. But does someone want to say, does anybody know, like, why is it okay that like one side of my equation, in other words, I'm kind of saying this, I'm saying it looks like what we're finding is this. It looks like I'm kind of saying that two things are equal, one of which has units of radians. So, so I'm claiming that omega equals square root of k over m, which means I'm claiming that by knowing something about the objects in your mass spring system, by knowing something about their physical properties, like knowing how strong the spring is, knowing how big the mass is, I seem to be claiming that you could automatically know how fast the thing is going to go back and forth, like before you even put it on the spring, right? That seems to be what we're saying here. But the one little catch is that seems to be true if I believe that a whole bunch of stuff that reduces to one over seconds means the same thing as a whole bunch of stuff that's supposed to equal radians over seconds. How am I getting away with that is my question to anybody, if anybody wants to answer. Like, why is it okay for me to treat radians over second as equivalent to like nothing over seconds? Does any does anybody understand the question? I'm I'm talking way too much. Uh, oh, chat. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, I'm talking way too much. Or, no, 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 no. Yeah. So I understand the question. <laughs> okay. Okay. But Thanks. it's because uh, radians aren't an actual unit, but more of an yes. agreed upon standard. That is really well said. That is really well said. Um, they totally are a, an agreed upon thing, right? And standards a good word. Um, um, and they are not, in fact, technically. He's absolutely right. And I don't know because I have the screen up, I don't even know, is that, sorry, because I can't even see you. Who just said that? It was uh, Antonio. Antonio, okay, thank you very much. Yes, like he is right to say, he is right to say um, that radians are not a standard unit, which can be a very upsetting thing to hear after we just spent like 45 minutes dealing with radians and all these pictures. And I am saying, believe me, ra it's radians for the rest of this course. There's no more degrees in our lives. It's all about radians for the rest of this course. Um, we did all this work with them, and I'm, hopefully people can start picturing a radian is a sixth of a circle. It's true. But he's right. It's not a standard unit any more than degrees are standard units, not because we're lying, not because it's bullshit, but simply because of this. Is that what we said, the very definition of a radian is how far out on the arc you travel per some given radius, i.e. a radian is a strict thing that's real, but very really and strictly by its definition, it's a meter divided by a meter. It's meters, a, a radian really is a ratio, um, a unitless ratio, you, not some, ra you know, some ratios are not unitless, like velocity is a ratio of meters per second. So you can be a ratio of numbers that have units, but sometimes you can also not. A radian is a always, 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 a ratio of meters per meter, so the meters cancel out, and a radian is by definition always a pure ratio. And when you and that's why I call it a portion of a circle. A radian is just a freaking fraction, like a pure. And if you say something is pi radians, what you're really, really saying is it's a half of what? Of a meter? No. Of a second? No. Of a kilogram? No. Of a circle? Oh, oh, of a half a circle? Well, that makes sense. Well, why can't you call a circle a standard unit then? because all circles are different sizes. That's why, end of story, right? Like, so he's totally right. 
radians are super important, but they're not strictly a unit because they're not strictly the size of any one particular thing. So if I ever see radians per second, I can view that as bleh per second. Um, um, and by the way, that's also why they specifically make up a name, Hertz, for standard frequency. So we make sure that we're keeping things straight and not, since we can play fast and loose with radians, we don't want to confuse ourselves. Anyway, all of this is to say now, and we're just about done with this. I know I've talked way more than I meant to today or on this. No, today. Um, where this all brings us is, um, 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 is, well, first of all, if I believe all this stuff, I can at least finish the homework and solve the problem, right? I can say, okay, it seems like then, it seems like I've now, in just in the effort, just we, the givens were, the givens were this, the physics givens. No, let me, sorry. The first physics given is like always a physics given, right, was this. And then we said the particular physics that we're looking at, the particular physics we're looking at is the physics of a spring. And given that physics, we, we, and, and also given the definition, we came to say, okay, a mass on a spring is best described like this. But then in search for an actual position time function that contains the same information, we, we finally, we, we solved that differential equation and we decided this And by that we meant this, like all of this I'm now saying, I'm not saying, I, I think everybody should rewatch this and stuff. I'm not saying just cause I'm saying it, it's now instantly clear to everybody, but I am saying, I think it's technically proven. Like I think what we've written down now actually starts from nothing but a basic physics situation. And then we determined that we can describe that physics situation um, with the, the position function described above and the position function can be fully, fully expanded or filled in or, as long as we know that by omega, we, in order to find omega, we can do this K over M thing. Sorry. Right. So we started, with, right, right, right. Um, 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 so now strictly like for this, for this homework, uh, yeah, for this homework, how this works then is like all of that, what we just built up is the general answer to the homework one that we could use to answer any question like that in the future, but for this particular example of SHO, our particular example was given a, a K of 200 newtons per meter, given um, a, a mass of 0.3 kilograms, uh, given an initial position of point one five meters. Um, is there any other given? Yeah, just given given any laws of physics and math that we already knew, but then given those particular details, um, we were asked at t equals one, what is x? And we're finally ready. Now, by the way, obviously this is all on one problem of the homework. I know that. And I don't, I'm not meaning to suggest that every one problem we ever do, I'm going to take two days to explain. I fear not. Um, and I know there's still a lot more to go through, but, but this is, this is a big, this is a big thing. Um, at equal, not all things are this big. Uh, at equals on x equals zero. We've now finally, I think, satisfied ourselves that we can use this to figure it out. And this, this thing that we're using to figure out, I feel like we figured out, like it's not something that we just pulled out of nowhere and are asked to accept or memorize. I think this thing that we now have makes total sense, um, I think, for the moment, based on what we did. And, and we're fine. So now we can finally fill in numbers. Sorry. Because I have a quick question on this. Yes. In the textbook, it shows the equation um, x equals x naught cosine wt, but then inside of the parentheses, it also has plus a phase constant. Nice, nice question. Great question. Awesome question. Okay, and thanks for and nice like, secret plug that you've actually looked at the textbook. That's awesome. Um, no, no, very good point. Um, uh, or, you, that's act, and not an error, and we're totally going to get to that next year. Here's the thing. Uh, 
all of what we're doing right now, everything we're doing here is meant to uh, uh, prove that what we have is a solution to this differential equation, i.e. like the way I'm writing it works, but it's true, I said earlier, this doesn't, none of what I'm doing proves that this is the only solution. It proves that it is a solution. Um, in effect, there could be others. And we absolutely, the next step is to add that thing you're talking about. Like, we're not gonna ignore that. We're totally gonna do that next. But the reason I can get away with building this one step at a time is um, secretly, what, I, what we've really been guessing, the whole, our guess really amounts to this. I'm gonna write this in a stupid way, but just to make a point. We're, I've been guessing the whole time that x equals x naught cosine of omega t plus nothing, right? Like without saying it, I'm secretly, I'm just implicitly guessing that there's nothing inside that parentheses that it's like omega t plus zero. And he, all what we're doing proves that that does work. What you're saying, having read the textbook is, actually it turns out if we add some stuff inside the parentheses, other things could work too. That we, we could add zero or we could add something that's non-zero and it's gonna turn out that that also works too. So to include all the possibilities, we are ultimately going to stick another term in there. Again, absolutely right. Um, and just say that that term could equal any number, including zero. So right now we're just on the first simple case of the zero case, but you're absolutely right. And who was that? Who just said that? I'm sorry. It was like... Sorry. Oh, Ayeta? Or I, I, sorry. I, I cut out. It, yes, Ayeta or I, Aliyah? I can't see. It was Ayeta. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm Not that I'm like... But great, thank you. Um, yes, correct. And that, that's gonna be next class. We'll get to that extra term. Um, but right now I'm saying just to solve this. But again, everything here still works. It's just a special case of that. Um, so here I'm saying, oh, okay. Is that why we see phi sometimes added? Exactly, 100%. Yes, is that why I love this class? Yes, but yes, yes. Okay. Um, it's so now we do this. Now, the one set, I believe if you just, now, now this is a matter of the calculator, right? Like this is literally the end of finally of homework one. Again, disproportionate amount of time maybe on it. But um, and, and also, by the way, since I've taken this long to go over this, of course, that means I haven't even touched homework two yet today. And what that means is I have that much more to go over with everybody. So you just all automatically did get an extension on homework two by virtue. I mean, you had it anyway, but I'm saying, whatever I was going to sign you tonight and for the weekend um, won't even, I, the first thing I have to go over on Monday is now homework too. So everybody should understand that like I'm in this too with you. And if I just fell behind, I, I didn't, this is not behind, but it's not going to come out of your clock that I spent this long to explain this. You just have that much more time to work on the new thing, um, at least for now. Um, but having said that, I think we're now at the stage with this where if anybody, didn't, I'm gonna give everybody a second. Like a lot of you already did do this one way or another in your original homework that you turned in, but many of you didn't cause like I hadn't done all this. So could everybody take a moment on their own calculators right now to plug this in and just satisfy themselves they could see, they, could everybody just get the answer now if you didn't already, I'm gonna pause for a second. Um, and I'll, I'll, I believe I know what it is, but everybody just, just to catch yourself up with me, make sure we're on the same page. Everybody just plug in the numbers and or look at your homework to make sure you have a final answer for this. Sorry, um, I'll pause for a second too. And I'll, I'll look at the chat while I do that. Oh, yeah. 0 0.135. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry, hold on, hold on a second. Wait, wait. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading the chat. I'll look at that. I'll listen to you in a second. Wait. Uh, <coughs> Oh yes, everybody do from here on in your calculator should always be in radians, yes. I, and it's not like I wouldn't remind you if asked, but we're always in radians now, yes. Um, maybe in lab you're sometimes given degrees, but I don't think so. But, but then um, as to someone's very honest comment about skipping going over homework too, I, I'm hearing that. I, 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 actually, I think I know what I'm gonna do about that. But either way, the, the, well, I hear your comment about homework too. Okay, no please, yeah, no. Oh, well, people said no anyway. Okay, honestly, what, and again, I'm glad you guys are being so honest with each other and me about like that someone had the, I'm going to call it the guts to suggest something like skipping going over all over to homework two. And I'm glad that other people had the guts to say like, no, that wouldn't work for me. I mean, so far I find this very, very constructive and polite. I don't think anybody should feel um, on the wrong side of any of these discussions and I'm looking at them. And so I will say right now, 
the worst thing I would do with homework too, if I thought you were all saying skip it, what I might do is make a whole lecture and post it and have you watch it if I felt that everybody was saying that. I, but I would, you know, in other words, I might skip the class time and have you go over, see me go over it at night. I might, but I'm not, I don't even think I, frankly, I think it's too early right now. If enough people want me to go over it, then I, whoever doesn't, I apologize and they can do something else while I'm doing that. But yeah, I mean, right as of now, I probably will still go over it. Uh, but, but okay. ah, okay, and now, oh, so now we get back, wow. I do believe, now I agree, that if your calculator is in radian mode, which yes, it should be now, because we are totally assuming radians. Um, and degrees, by the way, I know everybody likes degrees more because they're more used to them, but the reason everybody likes degrees more is exactly and only that, that they're used to them. Valid reason to a point, but uh, only to a point. Like, the truth is degrees suck. They really, really get in the way and really make things harder, not easier in the long run. But that's a, that's a soapbox for another time. Uh, I do agree. I do believe that if your calculator is in radian mode, I also get the answer 0.116. Um, uh, and I do think that is the answer to the whole question. Of course, the real important thing is all that came before that answer. That, But yeah, I do agree. So you may want to take a minute and adjust if there's any questions. But I do agree that the final answer to this final homework, which you're going to put to bed in a moment, is 0.16. Whatever we do in a minute is not, I'm not going to start homework two in the next minute. We're going to take a breath and shift gears no matter what. Uh, but let me first just let this sink in and see, are there any questions on like either this 0.116 or any of the last, any questions on this? And actually I'm going to, I'm going to walk away for like 30 seconds just to give you a, yeah, just give you a chance to think and let this catch up, but, and tell me if you want me to turn back a page or something, but, um, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll walk away for a second. Are we supposed to be doing something? No, I, here's, sorry, here's, you're supposed to be just, like, I'm letting everybody sort of catch up and make sure that they're okay with 0.116 and with this. You're, if you're okay, you're not supposed to be doing anything, just taking a breath. For okay, a gotcha. Sorry, I was okay. just confused for a second. No, that's good. No, no, I'm glad. Um, hold on. Uh, All right, if... Okay, wait. So first of all, can can I get a sound from someone just to make sure that I because I just switched my audio? Does, can anybody make a noise? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and then I'm. Um, is, is everybody okay with, I, like, I think I just said a lot and it's a lot of small, each step I think could be boring enough for someone to tune out, but altogether it's a lot. I'm not expecting it all to be, I wouldn't test anybody on it right now, but I'm right now just making sure is everybody sort of in the moment okay with the answer 0.116 and, and it seems like, and yes, okay, I'm gonna take that yes. So um, I wanna say one more thing about this and then we, uh, and then we really are going to shift gears for the last, wait, this ends at 3.55. Yeah, we are going to shift gears for the last half hour after a small break. But the one loose end um, I need to tie up is how this all goes back to the definition of simple harmonic oscillation. Like, it's actually kind of powerful what we just did. What we, what we really did was, when we said that, when we did this part, Um, okay, so what, as to what omega equals square root of k over m actually means or implies, um, remember,
we're saying from here on it, it, it really, it is very important always to distinguish, uh, like everything is letters, right? Like more and more, any number that we ever dealt with in physics is gonna become a letter in this class because more and more what we wanna deal with is the general situation, not the particular um, circumstance. So everything looks like letters, which means that these equations start looking more and more abstract. What's really important whenever you're looking at a function or an equation is to, is to uh, recognize what the roles that the different letters are playing. Some letters are variables, some are constants, um, and that's very, very different. Um, and within variables, there's a big distinction between dependent and independent. Similarly, within constants, there's different types of constants. Um, to, to, very rarely when we call something a constant, do we mean that it's a universal constant. Like most constants are not like Planck's constant or something like that. They, we don't mean that they're the same number everywhere in the universe and for all time. When we say something's a constant, we usually mean it doesn't change with respect to certain other things we're worried about. Like in this case, the kind of constants we're talking about, K and M, the kind of constants they are specifically K and M are constant for a, a given um, mass spring I mean, this doesn't sound like technical science, but they're constant for a given setup of mass and spring, a given system configuration. Like in other words, a given lab group has one K and one M in their spring mass system and their K and N doesn't change as long as they don't change the spring in the, and the M, um, the mass. But another lab group of course has a different K and a different M. What's making the K or M constant for any given lab group is that they are constant, that K and M are material properties of the actual uh, equipment being used, right? They're constant because they are not constant from one piece of material to another, but they are constant given one piece of material. In other words, K and M, K and M, the kind of constants that they really are, are called parameters. A parameter is a specific type of constant. A parameter specifically means a material property or a property, a physical property of a material being used, a material property. So a parameter is something that is constant for a piece of material. Um, and what we're saying here, or what we, sorry, sorry, actually, take that back. what we are finding here, we're sort of, we're putting a mass on a spring and then like unpacking it and finding out all of the, pro uh, all of the um, um, things that are true of anything that acts like a mass on a spring. And one of the things that we're finding is that, um, sorry. still saying this not very well, but however, if we define a, a harmonic oscillator to be any one, any oscillator that actually oscillates according to Hooke's law, like if a, a harmonic oscillator is one that goes back and forth in accordance with F equals negative KX, and therefore in accordance with all the math we just did, if that's what a harmonic oscillator is, then what that means is that, um, that for a harmonic oscillator, the dynamics are fully determined by the parameters. That is an interest. Like, that's a weird. That's an interesting thing to say. If by dynamics I mean like how the thing moves back and forth, what the motion looks like. In other words, where it will be when, how many cycles it makes per second. We're saying that the dynamics of a mass spring system, the motions 
are fully determined by the material properties of the mass spring system. We're literally saying, put the mass down on the table, put the spring down on the table, just look at them, you know, measure them separately as items and without even setting up a clock or a, or a ruler or putting anything in motion, you'll know in advance exactly how the motion is going to be. The dynamics are determined by the parameters um, as opposed to what you might say, like, duh, of course. I mean, if, uh, of course, if a mass is going to go back and forth at some rate, like what else could possibly determine that rate besides um, how strong the mass is, you might say. And I might say, except I would say that in one side of my brain, whereas at the same time, if you ever put a mass spring in front of me and said, make this thing go back as fast, sorry, that's not what I mean to say. If you put a spring and a mass in front of me and asked me, well, how, how quickly do you think this thing's going to go? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, I like the Matteo question. Let me get to the Matteo question in a second. That's a great question. I might forget, but that's fantastic. But, um, um, but let me, before my train of thought crashes again, uh, uh, I'm saying it might seem obvious. Well, duh, the rate at which the thing goes back. In, and maybe it's not. By the way, if it's not obvious, then good, just keep listening. But in case you think, well, yeah, something would go back and forth at some rate determined by how fat the thing is or how strong the thing is, like what else would there be? What else there would be is its initial starting position, right? I would totally think that if I went up to a mass stuck onto a spring, which was stuck to a wall, and and I would totally think that if I pulled the mass out to a certain distance and let it go, it would go back and forth and back and forth at some like tick tock, tick tock, tick tock rate. But I would think that if I pulled the mass out way, way farther, that the thing would go back and forth a lot slower or a lot faster or something. But I would think that put another way, what I'm really, really saying here, I'm really saying that if we believe everything we're saying about simple harmonic oscillation, what it really means is that the period We appear to be saying that, that omega depends on k and it depends on m, but it doesn't depend on x naught. We seem to be saying that no matter how far back, within reason, you know, assuming you don't break your spring and stuff like that, we're saying you pull your mass out to some place and let it go. It'll go back and forth, wah, 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 wah. pull it out to a much, much, much farther place. And we're saying it's going to go the same rate. Wah, 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 wah. I didn't do that well at all, but we're saying that no matter I'll say one last final way because really this is the this is such a discovery and such a reason that it's a whole topic. We are really, really saying um, um, ah, no, that's not. I'm saying We're saying that what an oscillator is, is something that preserves the same amount of time for each cycle, no matter how large its cycles are. That is kind of a crazy thing. That is what we're saying. Now, wait, can you please explain period more? Yeah, period. So period is the period of an oscillator, the period of anything is the amount of time for one cycle. Like, so literally period is measured in cycle, I'm sorry, seconds per cycle. 
if the period of something is three seconds, that means it literally takes three seconds to make a round trip of whatever kind, like in this case, a mass to go there and back. If the period is three seconds, it means it takes three seconds to do one version of there and back. And what I'm saying that I think is crazy that I do want people, I, I don't think is instantly obvious or anything. I'm saying that all of this math that we're doing actually comes to the conclusion that if you have a proper harmonic oscillator, like a mass on a spring, no matter how big or small you make the cycles in space, like whether you originally stretch the spring to 0.15 meters and call that X naught, or you originally stretch it to 50 times farther out than that, either way, the period, the amount of time for each round trip will be the same. And that, and, and that, and, and the, the more times you say it in your mind or the more times you let it think about what I'm saying, it really is kind of, um, uh, 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 weird and, and, and nice. And you, and it's even possible to dismiss what I'm saying by saying, well, yeah, that's another one of those physics things. Where, like in an ideal world, it'll go back and forth forever, forever, forever. But of course we all know in the real world there's friction. So this is bullshit. Actually, I'm saying something even stronger than that. Sure. I'm talking about the ideal world, but let's talk about the real world. I'm saying, yeah, in the real world, there's friction, of course. And, and of course we can analyze it too, but even before we analyze the friction, there's friction on the, on a mass on any given spring. So you pull the mass out and it's going to go back and forth. And sure, in reality, due to friction, it swings as a mass goes back and forth. In reality, each cycle will take up less and less space. Sure, like it'll start damping out and the cycles will look shorter and shorter. So you might even look at it and say, oh, that thing is slowing down because of, you know, reality. But what I'm saying is even while that's happening, sure, yeah, each swing is getting shorter and shorter in space, in amplitude. But what I'm claiming here is that I don't care. Even if each swing is shorter in amplitude, each swing is still taking the same amount of time as the swing before. In other words, even as a simple harmonic oscillator appears visually to slow down, it doesn't slow down. If by, it doesn't slow down in its ability to keep time. A sim, in other words, a simple harmonic oscillator is a metronome. It is a clock. It is the essence of a clock. It is everything that a clock means. It's something that keeps time even while you scramble up space. <clears throat> and that's in the real world because the real world just means the real world means with friction, you got to account for the fact that that amplitude is going to shrink and it will, but I'm saying <laughs> frequency doesn't depend on amplitude. So I don't care. Um, a simple harmonic oscillator in short is a clock and, and anything that we use to make a clock must be a simple harmonic oscillator. I, I don't, I have to hear more about your lab if I catch a breath. Uh, but you know, you start with mass on a spring in lab and then you move to a pendulum and your goal ends up trying to show that at least under certain conditions, a pendulum, is a simple harmonic oscillator. No coincidence, um, uh, that's why uh, early mechanical clocks were based on either, uh, were based on pendulums and then watches are based on springs. And then we get into electrical springs and stuff later with, and digital watches. But to keep time is to oscillate harmonically. Um, 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 uh, uh, oh, so now finally, um, Mateo's, oh, sorry. So that means that I was equal space. Right. So does that mean the dynamics I'm talking about are equal in space and underwater? Yes and no. Like, it's absolutely true. If you put an oscillator underwater, th that, that um, in effect, that might be equivalent to changing the spring constant of the spring or something like that. You might, by putting it underwater, wait, actually, wait, no, no. No, I actually, I'm going to stand by. I, I was going to say something technical, but no, yeah. Even underwater, um, um, if, if you can, even underwater, this, the dynamics are the same. Yes, like like they're not ultimately, water can exert friction and cause damping of the oscillations. Like the oscillations will become shorter in size uh, earlier if they're underwater than in space. But again, my, my claim here that's sort of weird is that even as they get shorter in space, they won't get shorter in time. So yeah, I mean, Matteo's question, I think, oh, damping means, when I say damping, I mean the amplitude going down. So I literally mean like by damping, if you pull a mass, if this whole mass on the spring system that we're here considering, we originally pulled it out. We pulled the mass out to 15 centimeters away from the equilibrium position and we let it go from there. 
uh, um, so its initial position was 15 centimeters. Um, we watch it go back and forth. We came to the conclusion in our minds, we decided if there's no friction, um, this thing is going to keep arriving at 15 centimeters. Like each cycle will be, will bring it back to the 15 centimeter mark. Um, so that initial position becomes its maximum position. Like that's as far as the thing will ever get over and over and over 15 centimeters. That number we call amplitude, like the farthest, the maximum displacement of the oscillator, which tends to be the initial displacement of the oscillator, we call that amplitude. And if that thing happens to be going down because of friction, because of reality, like if, if the oscillator doesn't perfectly stay at 15 for an infinite number of swings, if it goes from 15 centimeters down to 13, down to 11, down to 10, and as it would in reality, we call that damping because the amplitude is going lower and lower uh, as time passes. That, so that's what I mean by damping, if that helps. Um, but I'm saying even when that happens, that's a statement about amplitude. And the key breakthrough here is that an oscillator, oscillator just means go back and forth, but a harmonic oscillator is one that goes back and forth at a rate in time that is constant, that's determined by just the material properties of its system. A harmonic oscillator is one that you know how fast it's gonna tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, just by picking up the items that it's made out of and looking at them. Um, if it's harmonic, that tick tock rate. So, oh, so bottom line, so if it's harmonic, that means, if it's harmonic, that means that um, period or frequency, which, you know, whichever you like, all of them are interchangeable. Angular frequency, frequency, period, um, that they, that those, So I'm one final way to say what I'm trying to say in English is that if something is a harmonic oscillator, then it can be described by all the math we just did, and um, and, and all the math we just did uh, means ultimately that that the rate of oscillation is fixed the moment you choose the materials to be oscillating and is not fixed and cannot be affected in any way by what you do with those materials. The oscillation is affected by the materials, not by how you configure the materials, not by the initial conditions. In other words, it doesn't matter where you hold the spring, it just matters what the spring is made of um, uh, in terms of the period. Um, that's why clocks are even possible at all. Um, um, that's what all this means. Oh, wait, uh, it's 340. So uh, I, some of you still haven't gotten homework one back yet. I had said you were going to get it back by the end of this class because I actually thought, I didn't think I was going to talk quite as much. Um, uh, I, right after the class ends, I will con go straight to continuing to grade those. So if you haven't gotten homework one yet, I apologize. You should have it like, very shortly after this class. Um, and, then, and nobody's gotten homework two back. You'll get that you, tomorrow or whatever. Uh, again, if you haven't turned in either or both, you still can. If you haven't joined Google Classroom yet, please hang out for a second at the end. Um, um, but what I know, I, I want to move on to the other stuff. I mean, wait, let me just pause for a second. Uh, oh yeah, I'm not going to start going over homework two yet today. Like that would just be too much of a brain shift. I if there, I want to maybe try one more five minute quick thing with everybody. Uh, let me think for a second. All right, yeah, I, um, I apologize, I'm not gonna give a break. We're gonna, any, any questions on this so far? Sorry, any, we'll take a mental break. Any questions on this so far? Okay, <laughs> that wasn't the most inviting way I could ask that question, I know, but uh, um, um, we're done with, th this topic we're not done with at all. It's, I mean, we're gonna build everything in the course from this concept of simple harmonic oscillation. Again, where this is going is, waves are built from oscillators. So this is going to lead us to wave motion. 
the equation we're always going to use, that, that cosine thing, we're, we're definitely not done with it. But we, I think we are done with this homework sheet. Um, before I go to homework number two, uh, in the last few minutes that we have, um, please forgive, but let me turn it to you to do one. I want to do one practice exercise now to put this in perspective. It's similar to things you did in that math methods homework, which again, you still have time to do because obviously I haven't gone over it yet. So anything you did would still be originally yours and all that. Um, but can everybody do one quick thing as a practice? May, again, it may have been in that homework. I just want to see where you are with this. Um, and I know that we've got like 10 minutes left, but can everybody shift gears? And do this. And you could talk with one another, please do in fact. Okay, uh, please solve this. This is, this is a sidebar. I mean, it's very related, but it's not based on what we just explained. It's like based on old math that you had before this class. I just want to see where you are with this. Actually, just to make it clear that this is math, not physics, I'm going to do dy dx instead of dx dt. So don't think about oscillators or anything. Just think about the math that is given something that looks like this. Oops, sorry. Is that 5x or 5y? Wait, very good question. It's supposed to say 5x, very fair question. It is supposed to say 5x, um, but it is not clear. Yeah, so it's supposed to say, it's supposed to say I am an X. Once upon a time, I actually, ugh, once upon a time I had handwriting. Um, okay, uh, this is what I want to say, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna to try to write this more neatly in a minute. This is something I will, and I would like you all to talk freely about this. I just want some group consensus on the answer to this. And then we're gonna wrap up. Well, then I'll tell you why I asked, but then we'll wrap up. But so background practice problem is give it some function, like why some, why some function of X such that I'm telling you that dy dx is equal to five X. Like that's just a given that I'm giving you. And I'm also saying that the initial value of Y, why not happens to be three. Okay, given those two facts, can you find what is y as a function of x? If you, right, so this is like a, a, a distilled uh, version of everything we, this is, in other words, in a way, this is like a differential equation. I'm giving you the derivative. I want you to find the function just to practice this way of thinking that we're now doing, going in this kind of backwards, like reverse engineering way. So can everybody, tr um, I will leave, I'm I gonna Oh, yeah, go, go. By yeah. why not, do you mean why when x equals zero? Nice, yes, thank you. That, okay. And maybe I should have said that, but yeah, yes, I absolutely do, yes. Sorry, that looks like an x again, but yes. And given that, in fact, well, yeah. Oh, God. Um. So again, so everybody's trying to solve this right now. If we had more time, I'd put you in the breakout rooms and blah, 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 but we're doing this a little bit rushed, but I would, that was a good, if anybody want to think, I'll, so I'm giving everybody time to think, but if, if it helps you to think to talk, out loud, please do anyone, or if you think you have an answer. Um, um, any, does anybody want to say it? Like, in fact, and I, I know I should have, 
I keep screwing up the screen, but the person that just said that, that was, I know who that was. That was, but I don't. So that was, that was Antonio, yes, who just said that? Okay, do you, thank you. Um, do you mind, do you want to take, do you have a thought of like, how did, do you want to, okay. Uh, like work through it or like. Yeah, um, yeah, if you want, or anything like that could tell other, yeah, something toward an Yeah, so um, you integrate uh, by, so you multiply both sides by dx. Yes. Um, Sorry. Yes. Go on. Multiply. So multiply both sides by dx. Then you have dy is equal to five x dx. Uh, integrate both sides. Yes. So the integral of one is y, nice. um, and then the integral of five x dx is going to be five x squared divided by two. Um, now you have plus C because that's a general integral. Nice. And so that's why it gives us the Y naught. Yes. And so you plug in X equals zero. And in this case, that just means Y is equal to C or three is equal to C. So your final equation is Y equals five X squared over two plus three. Seriously, that was tight. I, um, hold on a second. You obviously did not No, Yes, that was really good. Hold on, let me just catch up to you. And relevant. Um, and honestly, to everybody, the way he just said all that, even if every step had been completely wrong, I just want to say the way he said it, it was very, I, I would be clapping even if every step were wrong. Don't be afraid. Be wrong. But it was very right. Um, uh, uh, so why? Right. I'm just summarizing what he just said. I think I'm doing what he. Therefore, the answer is. Uh, right. Wait. I think this is. Is this what you said? I think is it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Now, here's what. Now, first of all, I, I I'm, I'm excited, uh, partly because like I, I think it makes sense and it was right. I do, and I think that with the calculus that people have, like once you see it, everybody should see that that is right. And make sense. But it doesn't mean that everybody thought of it on their own that fast. Or it may I mean some people may have known integration was involved, but sort of just did it without exactly knowing why. And maybe people didn't know what to do with the C business. All of what he just did is exactly how we do it in physics. The main reason I'm bringing it up, knowing that we only have five minutes left in class, like the main reason I'm bringing it up is exactly. Oh, sorry, it's not that at all. Is exactly that point where I clapped that first step where he multiplied, where Antonio multiplied both sides by dx is very, very key because a lot of people in the room may know that, okay, we, we've got a derivative here and what we want is a function. So we got to work backwards. So we got to do an integral. So a lot of people like, would, and I commend them for this, would know that an integral is involved, but the strict reason we're allowed to integrate at all. And the reason we know how to integrate and what to integrate is because of that first move he made where he multiplied both sides by dx. Uh, the reason a lot of people might not think to do that, it is necessary, but the reason they might not think to do it is they might not even think that it's okay because the way a lot of people learn calculus, a lot of people are uh, get in the habit of thinking that dy over dx is just something called a derivative and that you're not allowed to treat it as a fraction and split it up like that. There are times when you're not, that's true, but I think those are exceptions that get way, way uh, in our way. Every, I encourage everybody to think of dy dx exactly as a fraction for which it's often very useful to do things like this. And why am I, so, so I say he did have to do that first move. He multiplied both sides by dx so that then it was reasonable and proper to integrate both sides. You can't integrate, like what's wrong is you can't do this. You, th this has no meaning. You can't integrate a derivative, that means nothing. And you also can't integrate like just a variable. You have to, to integrate, we'll talk more about this, is to add up um, an infinite number of infinitely small things. The infinitely small things are that, is that dx term or the dy term, what we call a differential. The reason I'm saying all this, okay, is that that example was an example of an equation that has a derivative in it and from which we work backwards to get a function. And he did it exactly right. That is not what I would call a differential equation. What we, I mean, not that, that that doesn't diminish what he just did, but like what, what, why we're making such a big deal in this class of something that we're calling differential equations is, is, is if I had given you this instead, and this is where we're about to end. I know we have two minutes, but just imagine instead, 
if I had said dy dx equals 5y, and then I also said imagine that y naught equals 3, okay? And this is, this is where we're going to end, but everybody really needs to look at this explicitly in their own way on their own time. I'm going to make a huge deal out of something that looks like a tiny, tiny detail. I'm saying that the exact same problem that I just gave, that Antonio solved, that I'm hoping, thinking everybody else is kind of on the same page with, if I had just tweaked one thing, if I had said dy dx equals 5y, rather than equals 5x, it would look just as easy or look just as much like a derivative, blah, blah. But if on that one, if I say dy over dx equals 5y, if I multiply both sides by dx there, then I do not have something that I can integrate. It makes no, or it, yeah, it makes no sense. To, I mean, if I integrate the right side, it looks like the variable of integration is x, but then y in fact is a variable, so it's incoherent. And if I don't multiply dx by both sides, I definitely have no right to integrate. So what I'm saying is this is totally different. Um, from just an, in other words, this is not directly integrable. If we have a situation where the derivative is expressed as a function of y rather than x. Now, y and x are just letters, who cares? And we're not even using y in our class right now, we're using x and t, so what's this got to do with? What I'm saying is, if you have a derivative that is equal to a function of the dependent variable, rather than the independent, then you have what we had in class. Like what we have in class, in class, I mean, it happens to be a second derivative, but that's not even the issue. The issue is that in class, what, what, oh, I already made a mistake. And we're about to end, I know, I know. I finally got a watch, sorry. Um, in, uh, in class, we had this. If on the right side of this equation, there had been a T, if there had been a T, then we could basically do something like what Antonio just did, all the, do it twice because it's a second derivative. We basically could have integrated twice to get all the stuff, but it's not a t on the right side. It's an x. In other words, the rate of change of the rate of change of this motion doesn't depend on on time. It depends on the motion itself. In other words, what we have here literally is we're a situation where we're saying hey, I want to know where the mass is at any given time. So someone else says, well, you're a physicist, dude. Like, all you need to know is the acceleration. If you know acceleration, you can always know position. And I'm like, oh, cool, that's true. You're right. All right, so what's the deal with the acceleration? And then they say, it depends on the position, right? This is circular, what we have here. We have rate of change, of rate of change of some, of, of some quantity. What we really have here is rate of change of effect with respect to cause is dependent on effect rather than dependent on cause. We have two mirrors facing each other here. But in, in, that, in other words, if, if we have a derivative is a function, if some derivative is a function, I'm writing this really quickly, of the dependent variable rather than the independent variable, that's when we call it a differential equation. When the, when the, when the rate of change of effect is not dependent on cause, but dependent on effect itself. We have some kind of feedback self uh, re referential situation that is described with self referential math, like i.e. the x that's sitting there on both sides. And that's what makes it interesting and, uh, and harder to unpack than some other math equations. And ultimately anything in the world that involves any kind of feedback at all, like compounding interest like how much money do i have in my bank account right now bank teller and they're like well it depends how much interest you got yesterday and i'm like how much interest did i get yesterday and they're like well it depends on how much is in your account which is all true that that kind of like it, insanity which seems like it shouldn't be solvable is all is describable as a differential equation and weirdly can be solvable that's what we're seeing here differential equations are not just derivatives they're feedback loops that somehow we can solve Again, by methods that we're developing here, not because of anything anybody had to do in another class. I know we have to go. I know I owe you some of you homeworks um, and, uh, and, and more homework for tonight and the weekend. Um, uh, 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 uh. Oh, I'm gonna say really quickly now, I think, and I'll post this to you if it's true, I think I'm gonna do office hours this Friday in the morning, which I apologize, I know that's weird, but, <clears throat> um, I th but anybody who can make that, if you want, I'll post, I think, like 8.30 to 10 or something. I know that's crazy, uh, but what can I do? Um, it's, it won't be the only option. Um, so I think we all, if you have to go, please go, please go. I'm going to go in two minutes, but I'm going to hang for a second if there's any 
question, but please go, please go. You guys are great again. Um, okay. And I have to ask though, Antonio, uh, you are, uh, wh where do you go to school? Uh, I go to RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay. We're up by uh, Oh, I know where you are. I, you do not have to explain where RPI is. No, don't worry. We get, we get confused for RIT a lot, which is in Rochester. Oh. Yeah, everyone always confuses our acronym. No, oh, right, but that's weird. No, but you, no, but yeah, I know who you are, though. No, yeah, because, oh, I'll, um, but I mean, I know who that is. No, that's cool. That's yeah. Cool. Um, cool. Okay. Um, uh, 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 um, no, right, because for first of all, you're near to all, but you're like, yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. The guy who wrote our textbook, our textbook comes from your school. Um, I don't even know if you bought the textbook, really? but the Holiday, Holiday Resnick and Walker um, is our, but anyway, I'm just babbling, I'll talk another time. Uh, are, any questions on the physics? Any questions anywhere? Hello, hello, any? Uh, oh, th okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions? Any questions? Oh, any Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. I don't know if you can hear me. I had a quick question about the homeworks. Y yes. Okay, so I know last semester, Professor Walters, he would assign us the homeworks and then he would pick like a few questions that he found like relevant to the next day's lesson. Will you be doing the same or will it usually just be like we have to do the whole thing? What do you mean? You mean in terms of, wait, in terms of, what you have to do or what I go over? No, like what we have to do, because I know last night's homework, it was a lot. So I was just wondering if that's always going to be the case or if you'll be like splitting it up sometimes and just being like, oh, well, tonight just do questions one and four or something like oh. that. Oh, yeah, no, I will adjust as we go to your page. No, I, it's not always, I didn't, I, in a way, I, no, there, it won't always be that much, number one. Number two, like, for example, today, uh, it turned out that that was a lot. So the first thing I'm doing is sort of giving you more time to do it. Like, like, in other words, you're not going to be pen. I, maybe I, maybe it would have been ideal if right from the start I said just do the first couple of questions. But I actually I didn't think they were a lot. I didn't think to say that. And maybe next time I will. But even here, since it took us so long to go over the first, and since everybody said that that was a lot, the, the first thing I'm doing is giving you more time to do it. If that makes sense. Like you're in no way. Are you, if you hand in that homework tomorrow or the next day or something, in no way am I going to treat that differently from if you handed it in today. Like you're not late, if that, um, and, but yes, I'll adjust as we go. If, if you, um, some homeworks are a lot shorter than others, et cetera. Does, is that answer or no? Like, are you okay with still doing homework too now that? Uh, that wound up answering my question. Oh, okay, 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 cool. All right. Um, oh, and by the way, wait, are you still there? Who are, wait, who was just asking that? Who? That was Ayatha. Oh, so you, Ayeta, my other thing, you had Walters for two or three, you're saying, right? That, yes. That's what you just, and so does that mean, so it must have been last fall, right? Not in the spring, is that correct? I had him in the summer, this past semester. Oh my God. Like last week. <laughs> of course, oh my God, of course. That makes so much sense, but I totally forgot. That explains, that's why there's, a bunch of people in this class that are from John Jay, but I don't know because they just took two of the, of course, sorry, that straightens me. Thank you. Yes, that makes sense. I'm an idiot. Yes, but so that, and that's my answer to the, um, okay. And it went fine though, right? Or you did fine, yes? Yeah, I did really well. It was really good. nice. Good, good, good. All right, well, hopefully the same. Well, he, well, in general, if you're ever wondering, I wonder if Yaverbaum does this like Walters. In general, we're far more similar than different. I mean, obviously we're sim different people, but I mean, we work together because we want to, and we try to be like each. I mean, we and we try to stay coordinated. So in general, you know, uh, we are trying to follow the same way. Yeah, you, whatever expectations you build, and certainly the grading policy and all that is the same. Whatever. So yeah, if you did well there, things hopefully will not be too shocking here. Um, but uh, I did notice one thing that was a bit different in the lab. Um, it was from like point eight to one point one. And I think now it's like 0.85 oh. to like one or something along the lines of that. I forget exactly, or 1.05 or something like that. I know it's less. Interesting. Okay. Thank you for bringing my attention. I'll check in with Wu. I mean, that's a Wu Walters. I mean, that may well be. It may be that they decided to change the, something about the lab grading from last semester to this. And I'll check in with them. Like, it would, it, like, 
that's not necessarily against the rules if they did that, but also maybe it wasn't intentional. So I'll check in with them and make sure. But um, yeah, I'll check in with them and make sure. But yeah, that I'm not saying that everything in la but there too, in general, Wu Walters and I are all trying to be on the same page all the time. So yeah, I'll, I guess I'll, wait, you say, yeah, I'll check in about that. Uh, uh, if it's, yeah, I'll check in is all I could say. I mean, generally speaking, if we don't like to make changes mid semester, unless it's clear that they'll make everybody's grades higher, not lower. Um, but if we change something slight from one semester to the next, it's generally for the same reason. We generally don't try to make, we, if we find that some grade weighting thing is not working perfectly, it usually means we think it's unfairly punishing people. We almost never make a change to make grading harder. Um, but, but again, I'll check in with them. That makes sense. Um, any, um, well, thank you. Any oh, thank you, thank you. Any other, and again, those people, I, I apologize, those people who haven't gotten homework one back yet, you will get it shortly. Um, I apologize for that, but you will. Uh, other, any other? Okay, so I think I'm going to say goodbye if there's no other. Are we good? If we're, uh, okay, cool. Thank you all very much. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.